technical issues that why it has to be delayed for few minutes so inconvenience cause is highly regretted well well uh, today i'll be continuing with hepatology i have already done part 1 in delhi center but now i'll be continuing with the what we did last time okay how i will many of you are joined for the first time how i'll be teaching you in a integrated approach i'll be covering a to z about liver diseases i'll be not be teaching only one subject so called hepatology in medicine but i'll be covering anatomy physio biochem patho pathophysiology pharmacology micro surgery pediatric radio medicine that means whatever is in relevant to the disease a topic i'll be covering okay now before i really start the first topic which is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis but many of you are meeting for the first time so one more thing study should be a fun otherwise studies are the most boring thing in the world but i'll make it very interesting for you so that you start loving and enjoying the studies also so to make it more interesting i'll begin with the ek share se shuru karunga many of you are meeting me for the first time is baat pe ek sher arz hai irshad bolte hain irshad bolte hain kuch nasha dheemi barsaat ka hai kuch nasha teri baat ka hai kuch nasha dheemi barsaat ka hai kuch nasha teri baat ka hai tum yu hi hame sharabi na samjho tum yu hi hame sharabi na samjho ye asar mere dil par ye asar mere dil par teri pehli mulaqat ka hai well with this small beginning so let's talk about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis first point what we write as sbp it is a peritonitis it is a due to bacteria but it is spontaneous this why it is spontaneous the answer is without any apparent source of infection there is no apparent source of infection but still peritonitis is occurring so what if we can summarize idiopathic infection of ascites ascites is there but now it is if we get infected then we call it to be spontaneous bacterial peritonitis so all of you write down and make a box like this i'll be giving lot of boxes which you have to study a before the exam one day before exam and i assure you what i'm teaching you the everything you will be able to revise in just whatever i'm teaching you today you can revise in just less 15 minutes only okay so this box number 1 i hope you have written if some of you find that you are a little slow in writing then you can click the photograph and you can add on to your notes later on if you are not able to write it right chaliye now in a patient whom a diseased liver is there an altered portal circulation definitely when liver disease is there portal circulation is is impaired that is a there is a defect in usual filtration function we we are quite aware we are quite aware that liver has a they can remove the bacteria because we have a certain macrophage cell ka macrophage cell macrophages which remove the bacteria but liver is not functioning to so dekha the, that these bacteria are not removed okay next point 
what are the clinical features when the patient develops spontaneous bacterial peritonitis? Fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, and rebound tenderness. This is a very, very one point which is really indicated of, of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Make a box of this line. Rebound tenderness. So in a ascetic patient with fever and rebound tenderness, you think about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Okay. Now what are the microbiology? Which bacteria, of course bacteria are involved, but which bacteria? How come? How can bacteria reach there? Number one, from intestine. Note it down, intestine. Ascites is there. There is a fluid in the peritoneal cavity. There is a ascites. There is a water fluid in the peritoneal cavity. And here is the intestine. And this bacteria can directly go from intestine. can directly go and this is so called direct translocation. <coughs> Second, sometimes it can come via blood route, hematogenous. Hematogenous means via blood. That means infection is somewhere else. <coughs> Maybe there is infection in the skin. That infection can come via hematogenous route. So there are two routes by which infection can spread. So, Intestinal root and second is hematogenous root. So you can make a box of these two words, only these two words. Intestinal and hematogenous, only make a box of these two words only. And the, now which is the microbiology? This Remember, this, I'm talking about microbiology. Let's integrate with micro E. coli. Again, make a box. Most common organism is E. coli. We are quite aware that E. coli is a very important bacteria in the intestine. That means in this particular slide, the three key, there are only three keywords. One is intestine, second is hematogenous, third is E. coli. I request all of you to repeat wherever my pen is going. One is, yes, intestine. Second is hematogenous, third is E. coli. Three keywords in this particular slide. Now, how we diagnose that patient is suffering from spontaneous bacterial peritonitis? More than 250 polymorphs per ml. You do ascitic fluid tapping. In ascitic fluid tapping. You do take out the fluid and the 250, it has got more than 250 polymorphs, neutrophils. In per ml of acidic fluid and number two, SAAG more than 1.1. About this I discussed last time, serum albumin acidic gradient. Okay, so the diagnostic criteria. 250 polymorph more than 250 per ml and SAG more than 1.1. So this again make a box of this line. Right, so now a quick recap. Just repeat behind what I'm underlining. More than 250 polymorphs per ml, yes. SAG is more than, yes, 1.1. Two keywords in this particular slide. Treatment of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Intravenous amoxicillin and clavulinic acid. And number two, ceftriaxone. So we can use either amoxiclavulinic, which is also known as augmentin. And second is ceftriaxone. 
okay so i hope you are very clear a quick recap of all the important point about sbp all the important point okay the first keyword is intestine hematogenous and e coli all of you speak intestine hematogenous and e coli then diagnostic criteria speak wherever my pen is going more than 250 polymorph per ml sag more than 1.1 treatment intravenous amoxiclavulinic and yes ceftriaxone that's all. so i hope things are clear to you Next golden line to remember. In a cirrhotic patient, patient fever, tender abdomen, more than 250 ml of polymorphs in a cytic fluid is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. This is a golden line to remember. Your whatever exam you write in the world, that your question will be coming based on this particular line it's such a beautiful line gives summary of the entire this thing so cirrhotic patient fever tender abdomen rather you can add rebound tenderness with more than 250 polymorph per ml is in acidic fluid is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis Now, the next topic of discussion is hepatorenal syndrome. Okay. Well, the word itself shows that it's a liver is involved. Kidney is also involved. That's why the word what we use is hepatorenal syndrome. What is this? Box number one. Functional renal failure, write down this line. In the presence of hepatic failure, that make a box of this, the way it is written. Functional renal failure based entirely in the presence of hepatic failure. Kidneys are normal, there is no renal pathology. Now, what is this? What is this? We have one patient who is having severe liver failure. Liver is not working. Whatever cause may be, it may be cirrhosis, may be acute liver failure, whatever, liver is not working. In this patient, kidney, kidneys are normal. There is no pathology. If you take a biopsy, kidneys are normal. But, but they fail in working. They fail in working. Very interesting. Kidneys are normal, but they fail to work. So kidney failure occur. Since structurally they are normal, so we call as functional renal failure. Why it is so important to talk about functional renal failure? This kidney is there. The two kidneys, both are not functioning. And this is all due to liver. Liver, this is the liver disease is there. Liver is not working. The kidney also fail to work. So definitely, if kidneys are not working, so in this patient, urea will rise. Creatinine will also rise. Kidneys are not functioning. But if you take out these kidneys and transplant in some other patient, you transplant in some other patient they work there they work normally and for normal you take out from this patient you transplant in other uh, other uh, other patient they work very well so that's why we call as functional renal failure so this is the box that you got to make it the 
the box is functional renal failure of course in the setting of liver failure that's why we use the term as hepatorenal syndrome now now tubular function are normal but they are otherwise normal there is no problem with the whole gene random urine sodium is less than 20 mg this one the most important point to be remember urine sodium is less than 20 mg per liter very very important question there is no protein urea and no hematuria so don't forget make a box of this the way i have made the box is you make it box so how much is the urine sodium how much less than 20 and what about protein urea no protein urea what about hematuria no hematuria okay so friends golden line to remember patient is having chronic liver disease ascites functional renal failure how do you know functional renal failure? Urine sodium is less than 20 mg per liter. Normal hydration. This is hepatorenal syndrome. Golden line to remember. So, wherever my pen is going, you have to speak. What is this? Yes, chronic liver disease. Next is ascites this is functional renal failure urine sodium less than 20 milligrams normal hydration hydration is normal this is what hepatorenal syndrome i hope all of you are speaking behind me okay yeah so a quick recap out of these also out of whole this is the single most important line so urine sodium is how much yes less than 20 milligrams per liter okay so friends now we talk about hepatic and cephalopathy well if you look into the word hepatic something related to liver Encephalopathy is brain dysfunction. So, in the previous, it was a liver disease causing kidney problem. Here, we are liver problem causing some brain problem. Let us see what the problem is. So first of all, you look into definition of hepatic and cephalopathy. I will be writing HE. HE stands for hepatic and cephalopathy. It is a reversible. Underline the word reversible. That means whatever changes are happening in the brain, they are reversible. Alteration in mental status and cognitive function. Cognitive function means brain, intellectual function. In the presence of severe, it can be acute liver disease but or chronic liver disease. It has to be severe disease. In acute fulminant hepatitis, this can happen. So, if you have to definition, the first keyword is reversible. Number two is alteration in mental status and cognitive function in severe liver disease, which can be acute or chronic. The keyword, all of you speak out wherever my pen goes. The first word is yes, reversible. Alteration in mental status. Then what we have? Cognitive function. Severe liver disease. So this is the definition of hepatic encephalopathy. Now basic concept. Why this happened? 
सिंगल मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कल्पिट इज अमोनिया मेक ए बॉक्स ऑफ दिस लाइन सिंपल अमोनिया अमोनिया इज अ सिंगल मेक ए बॉक्स ऑफ दिस लाइन वेल वी आर वेल का अवेयर इट इज इट इज ए अमोनिया इज ए नाइट्रोजन कंटेनिंग मॉलिक्यूल so no need to say to no need to discuss to the illustrious student who are listening to me only only food element which contain nitrogen is proteins we are well aware nitrogen is not there in carbohydrate or lipid okay so definitely it has to come from protein metabolism now gi bleeding bleeding in the git this is causes increased nitrogen delivery why because blood contain protein it's a very very important line we all know that blood contain protein so gi bleeding is definitely going to cause more and more encephalopathy the applied is we have to control gi bleeding so now as i told you protein is converted into ammonia and that is absorbed into blood stream right so we are clear about it so in this particular slide the first keyword is ammonia bolenge everybody should repeat first keyword is ammonia second is gi bleed so there are only two keywords to be remember in this particular slide one is ammonia second is gi bleed the two key first keyword is yes second keyword is yes now what happens let's talk now we let's talk about biochemistry biochemistry integrate with biochemistry i just told you ammonia is getting produced normally what happen and for normal this is normal normally this ammonia combined with co2 and this re reaction occurs in liver and that make urea so in a normal like in your liver and my liver this co2 getting combining with ammonia is making urea in the liver so all of you in which organ urea is made liver how urea is made combined by which two molecule yes co2 and ammonia agreed now the patient is having liver failure this is not working if this is not working so obviously this reaction will not happen this reaction will not happen it will lead to increase ammonia because ammonia is not getting but apply this will go out of the lungs this will go out of lung but this ammonia will remain in the body that's why i say ammonia is the main culprit molecule which is the base of hepatic encephalopathy understood so the two keyword are ammonia and for gi protein is there well so biochemical basis i told you ammonia is getting produced which is diffusible but normally again normal person uh if it is ammonium is made ka in 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 normal person some amount of ammonia go to body some ammonia is converted to ammonium ammonia get combined with h ion and make ammonium ammonium and this will go out of the body so acidic ph is good acidic ph is good because that, that is going to combine ammonia with h ion and this ammonium will go out of the body but this is regarding ammonia which is diffusible and diffusible normally again repeating second time it will make metabolize into urea and otherwise ammonium is made in git goes out of the body so ultimate so it means our aim aim main aim will be reducing ammonia production so whenever we are planning any treatment planning and treatment is to reduce ammonia because we know now by now our concept basic biochemistry is very strong 
that we want to remove ammonia by all the means. So how we can reduce? Reduction, restriction of protein intake, definitely. We know the basic because only food item which contain a nitrogen is protein. So, so we have to reduce the protein intake is the most cost effective. In fact, reducing uh, protein intake, there's no expenses. Patient is just simply advised to take low protein diet. Low protein diet. So as such, this is a totally non-expensive. Low protein diet. Understood? Then we use oral neomycin. This is not only neomycin, it is oral neomycin. Now what happened? It kills the bacteria which contain urease. Urease containing bacteria. Okay. Urease containing bacteria, they will kill. So what happened in the body? We have got urease con containing bacteria. Right? So they are going to break down, uh, break down the, uh, those urea urea into they will not so in the urease containing bacteria they convert urea into ammonia plus CO2 in the GIT in the GIT okay this is the urea or protein what is coming in from the food we will cut break down urease containing bacteria now I have a question for you Write down the answer in your chat. Which are the urease containing bacteria in GIT? Quickly write down. You get 30 seconds to think and answer. You can answer in chat box. What are the urease containing bacteria in the small or in the small or large intestine? Quickly. Quickly answer. Quickly, well, before I proceed further, when I uh, said the share, Bahatai Logone Vava Kiye, thank you very much to all of you. Huge list is there. Well, very good answer. I'm getting everybody has answered. Well, let me, let me tell the answer to you. Urease containing bacteria in the intestine, they are Klebsiella. and proteus they are in the intestine but we have h pylori also but it is in stomach stomach so when they ask the question in protease containing bacteria in the intestine, Klebsiella or proteus, but otherwise H. pylori is in stomach. But many people have answered, I really appreciate and I'm feeling happy to teach to such interested and interacting student. Keep it up, it's a good habit. Answer right or wrong matters nothing to me. If it is right, it is good. If it is wrong, it is better because whatever mistake you commit here, you will never do in the exam because mistake is done only once. Better to do it right now only. So now, a quick shot, summary, make a box. Method of reducing ammonia is restriction of protein intake, oral neomycin, Lactulose and control GI bleeding. Lactulose also it make it causes make a ka, ka acidic pH. It make acidic pH of the intestine. I already told you that acidic pH is good. Ammonia will be converted into ammonium. Make a box. Method of reducing ammonia in the colon are restriction of protein intake. Oral neomycin, lactulose, and control of GI bleeding. Now I have one more question. This neomycin, 
okay it is given orally and it is not absorbed in git but even if little amount is absorbed in git it can lead to severe toxicity which toxicity it can lead to write down the answer quickly it can lead to what toxicity quickly write down quickly write down which toxicity it can lead to it is nephrotoxic is a very important question one small amount if absorbed it can lead to nephrotoxicity okay so as far as precipitating factors are concerned we already discussed increase nitrogen load now anyway nitrogen can come from gi bleeding now i don't in fact it's one of the most important precipitating factor i don't I need to explain again blood is a good source of protein excess dietary intake i discussed the point previously then uh, anything which which like azotemia if if uh, if kidneys are not functioning constipation they are the one which are precipitating precipitating factor for which can contribute out of these these two are very very important gi bleeding and excess of protein intake okay so anything which lead to increase nitrogen overload can cause more of encephalopathy right so as i told you excess protein will lead to urea into ammonia by the urease containing bacteria that is proteus and klebsiella point i already discussed with you electrolyte and metabolic abnormalities hypokalemia alkalosis alkalosis keep ammonia in the ammonia state but if it was acidic i told you acidic will convert ammonia into ammonia into ammonium it will convert into ammonium and we read it ammonium can go out of the body very easily okay so that's why we want acidic media is good for it and alkaline alkalosis is bad so we want acidic ph in the colon and that can be done by lactulose that can be done by lactulose hypoxia hyponatremia they all contribute to hepatic encephalopathy drugs sedative diuretics very very important because they produce metabolic alkalosis because they they lead to loss of hin they lead to loss of hin diuretic and we have read already read it anything which is alkalosis is bad is bad so we don't want anything which can lead to alkalosis other any infection any infection is super added infection is there super added infection is there especially if the patient develops spontaneous bacterial peritonitis which we read just now or any surgery is done but out of this this is the rank number 1 question this is a rank number 1 question don't forget this rank 1 question portosismic shunt which those who attended my class previous class is a very important method of treatment okay this 
is can precipitate hepatic encephalopathy because ammonia directly goes from liver uh, it bypasses liver so straight away from git ammonia goes to blood okay and that can precipitate remember this is the most important rank number one question which method of treatment is bad or which can precipitate hepatic encephalopathy is portosystemic shunt so friends infection to bolenge jahan mera pen jayega one is infection surgery and posto systemic shunt they all are bad so friend make a box precipitating factor everything is just covered into one small box increased nitrogen load electrolyte metabolic abnormality diuretics infection surgery and posto systemic shunt write it down take your time then we will revise also then we'll revise so now wherever my pen goes everybody should speak number 1 so precipitating for number 1 is what yes increase nitrogen load number 2 is yes electrolyte and metabolic abnormalities third drug like diuretic then infection then surgery and porto systemic shunt they are precipitating factors and make a box the way i have made the box make the the clinical features of hepatic encephalopathy there are certain early feature and there are certain late feature altered sleep cycle patient remain awake at night and and sleeps in their day time it's the earliest feature earliest feature how do you know well you there is a one patient admitted in your ward with liver disease you go for round in the morning at 11 am normally 11 o'clock all the people are awake but your patient is sleeping he is sleeping you ask the attendant they say the whole night he was awake but he just slept at 9 am to so altered sleep cycle is the earliest manifestation well if i talk about day to day many of us also many of you us also or us also we we have a tendency to read at night okay read at night people re study at up to 4 o'clock 5 o'clock oh uh, one more thing they not necessarily they, they they study well there are many other activities to they may be they may be watching movie or busy on laptop facebook and they sleep at day time so any of your friend is doing like this oh altered sleep cycle and remember is the earliest manifestation of hepatic encephalopathy but this can be normal also a normal person i hope you you will agree with me macrographia alter handwriting is again a early feature right you ask the patient to write okay monday it writing monday he is writing a next day suppose on day date 1 a day 2 a day 3 a day 4 a handwriting is becoming bigger and bigger you would ask the patient to write in a paper daily he write something and you can same thing then you can see at a glance macrographia is there so there are condition the handwriting become bigger and bigger now i have a question for you all of you write down the answer in the chat box in which condition you get micrographia handwriting become smaller and smaller quickly write down in your chat box in which condition you get micrographia quickly
Well, many of you have answered. In fact, I got answer for the for the nephrotoxicity also. Very good answer. Well, I'm so happy, glad if people are answering like anything. The right answer is Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism. Right to make a box of this also. Macrographia, hepatic encephalopathy, and micrographia, Parkinsonism. So, make a box. Early feature, altered sleep cycle, earliest feature, and macrographia, make a box of these two events. I hope all of you are making the boxes. A day before the exam, you have to read only these boxes. Right? Earliest altered sleep cycle and other is macrographia. Late feature of encephalopathy, the patient becomes confused. Okay, personality changes, violent or difficult to manage. Either he is confused or become violent, or patient may be very sleepy all the time, sleepy, sleepy all the time, difficult to arouse. Whole day, night he is sleeping. They are the late features. Okay, so late feature is what? Confusion, then violent or sleepy. So speak a first word is confused, second is violent, third is very sleepy. This is the most asterisk is there. This is flapping tremor. Flapping tremor. You forget everything, but don't forget this word, asterisk. This you can demonstrate like this. You ask the patient to extend. And this flapping tremor is there. Don't forget this line. This is the most important. Whenever they will talk about hepatic encephalopathy, this will be invariably there, but it's a late feature, it's not a very early feature. Okay. And one more thing, they cannot be elicited in patients who are in deep coma. If the patient is in deep coma, this cannot be elicited. Okay. This how we demonstrate, I was just demonstrating you, how we, you ask the patient and like this, and the way I demonstrated to you, this is the flapping tremor is there, right? Right, make a box, trail making test is done. Just make a box of this word, trail making test. This, will not be possible in hepatic encephalopathy. What you do, you write the way in our childhood, you write one, two, three, then you ask the patient to connect like this. This is a trail making. But if patient is hepatic encephalopathy, he will not be able to unite the lines. This we will call as trail making test. Rest is all description. You simply, you can skip also. Just write like this, trail making test. Patient is not able to unite because of, and of course this you can elicit only in the early stage. Trail making test will not be possible. Similarly, construction apraxia, just under, just uh, make a box of construction. What does it mean? You ask the patient, you make his star like this. Okay. Now what he will try, he will make like this. You ask to make a clock like this, he will make like this. He is not able to, we call it constructional apraxia. Apraxia means unable to do learned. Motor activity. Unable to do. Unable to do a learned motor activity is unable to do a learned motor activity is apraxia, construction. Here he is not able to construct or make the a star or, or a watch. We call it constructional apraxia. So friend, trail making tests will not be possible and constructional apraxia will be feature of 
hepatic encephalopathy eeg type physic we very commonly asked question this is a vip topic don't forget in eeg we get triphasic wave is the feature right so vip means a very frequently asked question treatment low protein diet now you know the reason control gi bleeding you know the reason and control precipitating factor whatever it may be we discuss so many precipitating factor infection hypoxia control this the treatment of hepatic encephalopathy make a box like this okay so treatment first speak out first point is yes low protein diet second is control gi bleeding control precipitating factors how we can make a box decrease ammonia production how we can do it by oral lactulose i told you it causes osmotic diarrhea constipation is bad diarrhea is good but diarrhea there will be less time for bacteria to break down bacteria will not get a time to break down protein into ammonia and co2 okay so it remove the nitrogenous product it remove the nitrogenous product so we use lactulose it make acidic ph acidic ph we discussed this point earlier i told you acidic ph and that convert ammonia into ammonium this point you already have written ammonia into ammonium antibiotic we talked about neomycin but other antibiotic what we can use are ampicillin rifaximin metronidazole neomycin can lead to renal insufficiency and ototoxicity metronidazole can cause due to peripheral neuropathy okay this so point to be noted not only neomycin mp rifaximin metronidazole are also used to so speak out which antibiotic we use number 1 is yes mp number 2 rifaximin number 3 neomycin number 4 metronidazole neomycin causes renal toxicity and ototoxicity metronidazole causes peripheral neuropathy golden line to remember altered sensorium esterexy that is flapping tremor increased blood ammonia cerebral edema in a patient of severe acute maybe acute or chronic liver disease this is encephalopathy entire encephalopathy has been squeezed into this box this box so i hope you don't mind repeating wherever my pen goes one is one altered sensorium then what is this esterexis what is this increased blood ammonia what is this cerebral edema severe liver disease hepatic encephalopathy so entire hepatic encephalopathy have been squeezed in this small box right i hope you have written and i am sure you are making the boxes the way i have made the boxes so now we move on to hepatopulmonary syndrome if you revise we talk about hepatorenal syndrome then we have something with hepatic encephalopathy problem was brain 
Now the problem is hepatopulmonary lungs are also involved. This is a VIP topic and this is a rank one question. 99% people do not know about this. So let us see what it is. Now hepatopulmonary syndrome is a triad of liver dysfunction, hypoxemia and intrapulmonary vascular dilatation. This is a rank one question. Nobody knows the answer of this question. Only except you. Rank one question. The liver dysfunction, that, that's why we call it hepatopulmonary syndrome. Hypoxia is a pulmonary syndrome. But why? In there are vascular dilatation is there in the lungs itself. And that is going to cause some problems. So try it of this. The clinical feature patient has exertional dyspnea is a feature of lungs involvement. Patient feel breathless on walking. He feels, doctor, I get tired, I feel breathless. Clubbing and cyanosis can happen. And this dyspnea is leave when patient lies down and worsen when they're sitting or standing. Very, very important point. On standing, it becomes bad. Even sitting also bad. Breathless problem become bad on standing. So the key words are exertional dyspnea, clubbing cyanosis, and it becomes worse on standing. So all of you revise wherever my pen is going. The clinical feature are number one, yes, exertional dyspnea. Number two, clubbing. Number three, cyanosis. Number two, dyspnea becomes worse on sitting and standing. This is hepatopulmonary syndrome. There is orthodeoxia. This is rank one question. Decrease PaO2 more than 3 mm when patient move from supine to standing. Patient is lying supine on the bed. And suppose its PaO2 is 100. Now he stands and PaO2 become 96. It was 100 on supine 96. That means 4 millimeter has fallen. If it is more than 3 millimeter, that is orthodeoxia. Like in this case, we can see if the patient has orthodeoxia. It's a characteristic feature of hepatopulmonary syndrome. Okay. So the key word is PaO2 more than 3 millimeter. So friend, golden line to remember orthodeoxia. Fall in arterial blood oxygen more than 3 millimeter from so upright position from supine. In a patient of cirrhosis of liver, this is hepatopulmonary syndrome. The whole hepatopulmonary syndrome has been squeezed in this particular box. Again, I am repeating, your question will be coming from the boxes what I gave you and it will make it very easy to revise. Now we move on to non-serotic portal fibrosis. Well, before I talk about this particular topic, let me tell you, we all know very well in cirrhosis, in cirrhosis of liver, we get uh, hepatic cell damage, these fibrosis in the liver and regeneration. Regeneration of liver cell. But this is in cirrhosis. We are getting fibrosis in cirrhosis of liver. But this sometime that there may be fibrosis in the liver due to non-cirrhosis. It's not due to liver cirrhosis the fibrosis is occurring due to any other cause. 
तो वी यूज दर्म एस नॉन सिरोटिक पोर्टल फाइब्रोस दिस बैकग्राउंड वी मूव फर्द सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट नॉन सिरोटिक नाउ दिस इज अ वन टॉपिक विच इज रैंक नंबर वन क्वेश्चन 99 परसेंट स्टूडेंट दे डू नॉट नो अबाउट इट इवन मेनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम दिल्ली एम्स ऑल्सो दे डोंट नो अबाउट इट बट यू नो इट दिस इज दिस टॉपिक आई लाइक टू गो लिटल स्लो स्टॉप राइटिंग सो फर्स्ट अगेन वी गो बैक टू बेसिक एनाटमी सो विदाउट बेसिक एनाटमी फर्स्ट विल टेक अबाउट एनाटमी देन विल डिस्कस माइक्रोबायोलॉजी ऑल्सो we have spleen and this is the artery splenic artery this is a superior mesenteric artery these two artery they combine to make portal vein so i can draw like this and they are making portal vein this is splenic vein superior mesenteric vein splenic vein superior mesenteric vein and they are making portal vein right look into this same thing same thing superior mesenteric splenic and they are making portal vein sometime problem may occur in this particular this particular this portion of portal vein which has not entered the liver this liver before it enter there was a problem and this is known as extra hepatic portal venous obstruction obstruction may occur in this particular portion extra hepatic portal venous obstruction this is known as eh pvo so or now in the liver this is in the liver it has branched and sometime fibrosis can occur here and this we call as non serotic portal fibrosis these two will lead to non serotic portal hypertension point to be noted point to be noted that i have written non serotic portal fibrosis the everywhere it is written like this but actual word should be non serotic portal hypertension non serotic portal hypertension is the ideal words why again everywhere they talk about so non serotic portal fibrosis is a type of non serotic portal hypertension so friend now you are clear about it now you are clear word is the actual word should be non serotic portal hypertension repeat behind me what should be the actual word the actual word should be non serotic portal hypertension bolenge yes is non serotic portal hypertension this can be due to non serotic portal fibrosis repeat behind me is due to non serotic portal fibrosis but other is extra hepatic portal venous obstruction what is called as extra hepatic portal venous obstruction so if the pathology is in the portal vein before it enter the liver it is eshpvo <coughs> or it can lead to portal fibrosis what we call as non serotic portal fibrosis i hope things are clear to you now non serotic portal fibrosis this is caused by e coli e coli infection or this could be due to certain chemicals arsenic vinyl chloride and copper make a box of this 
etiology of this pop. E. coli, arsenic, vinyl chloride or copper. Okay. E. coli, arsenic, vinyl chloride, copper toxicity. So which bacteria? E. coli. Which chemical? Arsenic. What else? Vinyl chloride. What else? Cop. Make a box of this. Write down. Make a box of this. One more box. This question from forensic medicine as well as oncology. Arsenic also causes skin cancer, lung cancer, and hepatoangiosarcoma. Question from oncology as well as skin also. Very, very important question. Forensic also. Let's integrate other things. Skin cancer, lung cancer, and liver cancer. Hepatic angiosarcoma. Now the clinical feature of non-serotic portal fibrosis. First of all, it occurs in children and young adults. Very important point. Very, very important point. Remember, normal cirrhosis, normal liver cirrhosis, they occur at the age of 40 to 60 years. But here we are getting children. Maybe we are getting a child of 10 years. So we don't expect 10 year child to have a cirrhotic liver cirrhosis, unlikely. Patient will have massive hematemesis, splenomegaly will be there. But normal liver function, very, very important point. That means usually when we talk about cirrhosis of liver, in cirrhosis of liver, we get liver LFT. LFT is deranged. That means liver is not functioning. But here there is no problem of liver as such. Liver function is normal. But massive hematemesis and massive splenomegaly will be there. But there will not be any liver dysfunction. Make a box of this line. So no jaundice, no ascites. No jaundice, no ascites because liver function are normal. Due to same reason even prothrombin time will be normal about which I will be talking to you in the coming slide. But make a box. Out of this, this is the single most important line. Age also, one more point, don't forget this thing. So, point to note it, in which age group it happened? Answer is children and young adults. What the coca? Massive hematemesis, massive splenomegaly, but normal liver function. That means no jaundice, no ascites, prothrombin time is normal. All clear? Investigation. All liver function are normal. Normal liver function, normal prothrombin, normal serum protein. Why? There is no problem of the liver. So all are normal. All are now. How to diagnose? You do photography. Simply make a box of tree in winter appearance. Just make photography tree in winter appearance. Make a box of this line. Just a beautiful picture. Tree in winter, especially in the European country, Russia, China, or Russia, Ukraine, etc. Classically, and of course, we see in India also tree in winter appearance. Don't forget this question from radiology getting integration. One more lovely tree in winter appearance. Okay, so make a box, photography, tree in winter appearance. 
photography is tree in winter appearance. Treatment is main problem is hematemesis. Go for sclerotherapy. Go for sclerotherapy. Okay. So I hope you are clear about this particular topic. Golden line to remember. Everything squeezed in this particular line. Hematemesis in a child or young adult. Maybe a 10 year old boy come with hematemesis. Massive splenomegaly is there. And normal pothomen time without ascites. This is non serotic portal hypertension. Golden line to remember. So now I want you to repeat behind wherever my pen is going, write down, which bolenge. Yes, hematemesis in a child or young adult. Massive splenomegaly. Normal PT. Without ascites. Non serotic portal hypertension. Okay, golden line, the whole is squeezed into these two lines. Drug induced liver disease, there are some drugs which can lead to liver disease. Well known fact is there. This is a very important question from pharmacology. So now let's integrate medicine with pharmacology. It's a very important question. You have to mug it up. So, there are certain drugs which can lead to cholestasis. That means they reduce the liver, they liver, reduce the bile flow. Especially chlorpromazine and high dose of estrogen. Not only uh, Cholestasis, but liver damage also. Non steroidal anti inflammatory and statins. Statin we use to control lipids. Acute hepatitis, they are anti TB drug. They lead to acute hepatitis. Non alcoholic steroid hepatitis, amiodarone. Venous outflow obstruction, boost sulfur and azathioprine. Lung fibrosis, methotrexate, granulometers, hepatitis, aloprenol, INH and carbamazepine. There is nothing explanation. They are all factual facts. This you have to mug up. Make a box. Make a box. And I'll, since it's a big table, I'll give some time to write. And after that, we'll repeat also. So, all of you, wherever my pen goes, you have to speak. Yes, cholestasis, chlorpromazine, high dose estrogen. Cholestatic hepatitis and side statins, acute hepatitis, rifampicin, INH, pyrazinamide, non alcoholic stew hepatitis, amiodron, venous outflow obstruction, bucylfan, azathioprine. Fibrosis, methotrexate, granulometer hepatitis, aloperinol, INH, and carbamazepine. I hope you have written it and now you remember also. Out of all these, this is the most important. You forget any other thing, I don't mind. 
but forgetting this is not advisable at all pcm poisoning is a very important question in forensic medicine let's talk integrate this with with medicine forensic medicine paracetamol we are well aware so called crocin we all have consumed must have consumed is a safe drug but everything beyond a certain limit is bad let's talk about poisoning half life of pcm is 2 to 4 hours simple t half 2 to 4 hours that means you take the tablet right now in 2 to 3 hour it has the level will be half now how it is metabolized if you take any patient normal therapeutic dose it is conjugated by glucuron glucuronic acid and sulfate so it happen with conjugation the key word is conjugation so in a therapeutic dose the word what you and me take is conjugation just underline the word conjugation little bit by cytochrome 450 enzyme also but little bit so mainly conjugation and other is little bit by cytochrome 450 enzyme so two keywords are all of you revise repeat behind me to metabolize in several dose metabolized by conjugation second is cytochrome p450 so in this particular slide there are only two keyword conjugation and cytochrome p450 i hope you have written and revised also now we talk about overdose in when it is overdose excess amount so initially it will be metabolized by conjugation but but now the load is too much now this system will be used more and more so in this scenario now when it is metabolized by hepatic cytochrome it will produce napqi napq you remember the full form is like this you do you know to remember not at all just remember napqi napq this is a highly toxic molecule make a box of this line so a b c make it make a box all of you overdose done it done it stop writing so again we look into what we wrote the number one is in overdose now it getting metabolized by more by hepatic cytochrome and that is going to produce napqi just remember this word you do need not remember this nobody going to ask you napqi napq and it's a highly toxic molecule so now you understood the why in overdose state why we are going to get toxicity because this molecule is getting produced only in overdose state not in routine now it is with it's a toxic molecule it it will immediately get conjugated by glutathione and it will be it will be neutralized it means this this molecule glutathione is a very good we want if you want to it can neutralize the effect of napq you got to have glutathione well this but body has a limited resource but paracetamol dose is very high so what happened this is n a n a p q i glutathione gluta thione 
little bit it can be managed but if the amount of npq is very very high then this will be consumed little amount was consumed but now more and more molecule coming up is nothing to neutralize and it is a toxic molecule so now it is going to damage liver liver cells okay it is going to damage the liver cells so if this is going to happen what we want which molecule which molecule can save glutathione so that means in the treatment we have to give something which can produce glutathione and the glutathione is the one which is the antidote of npqi so what so we learned the basic biochemistry we could integrate with forensic medicine ki why it is going to cause toxicity which enzyme because of p450 so severity is dose related this is a very important point the severity of paracetamol poisoning is dose related more the dose more the problem so let's talk about therapeutic and toxic dose 10 to 15 mg per kg like one tablet of pcm is 500 mg up to tds or qid we can go even if you take 6 hourly the half life is 2 to 4 hours so even if you take somebody take 6 hourly no problem will happen 10 mg per day body weight is 50 kg 10 will be how much 500 mg that's the usual dose but we take it this is this is therapeutic dose toxic dose may be from the tablet minimal toxicity 30 tablets severe so if somebody has taking 30 tablets that is or more than 15 or 20 tablet they are going to produce all the problem they are very important question from forensic medicine how many tablet 15 tablet 30 tablet are severe so in phase 1 which occurs within half an hour or up to one day half an hour or one day after ingestion patient may not have symptom or may have vomiting that means git effect in summary git effect means nausea vomiting may be there okay look into beautiful he says oh i don't want to eat anorexia just a lovely picture anorexia he is saying refusing the food just see the hand he is keeping to so phase 1 up to 1 day git problem day 2 1 to 3 days 1 to 3 days after ingestion in this urine output may be reduced so it may be renal phase may be renal phase he continues to have vomiting but renal problem 1 to 3 days up to day 1 it was yes git One to three days, it is renal. Yes, and okay. If you want to write it down, you can write down. Or what you can do, you can take a click later on. You can add it if you want. Some of those who are slow write in writing. but there are two boxes box 1 and box 2 but in nutshell is a renal phase i hope you have written it or click it now come the phase 3 hepatic phase this comes after 3 3 to 5 days after ingestion so stage 1 was git stage 2 was kidney stage 3 is liver 
वेल पेशेंट में कॉन्टीन्यूस का हेपेटिक नेक्रोसिस आकर्स जॉन्डिस कोग्लोपैथी हाइपोग्लाइसिमिया ऑल ड्यू टू लिवर डिसफंक्शन हिपैटिक एनसेफिलोपैथी अल्टर सेंसोरियम ए एल टी ओ लिवर एंजाइम वेरी वेरी हाई दिस इज ए एल टी इज एस जी पी टी एस जी पी टी इज टू थाउजेंड टू टेन थाउजेंड यूनिट पर लीटर एक्यूट रिनल फेलियर में अकर एंड डेथ कैन अकर ड्यू टू मल्टी ऑर्गन फेलियर राइट इट डाउन so in nutshell day 1 git day 1 2 3 is renal and then ka 4 5 6 3 4 5 6 onward is all hepatic phase where patient can develop acute hepatic failure with acute renal failure multi organ failure can occur and by the time patient can have multi organ failure multi organ failure can lead to death in short term then come the after 4 days to 3 week come the recovery phase patient start recovery phase patient start getting normal liver function ka start again come back to normal renal function also tend to come back to normal and what we have complete resolution can happen by okay so in nutshell phase 1 is what phase 1 is git phase 2 renal phase 3 hepatic phase 4 resolution 0 to 1 days One to three days, three to five days, four or five days, five days onward or four days onward. Okay. One to four days, three days, three to four days. This is the box of summary. Beautiful summary. Entire. PCM poisoning is squeezed into this small world. That's all you can write. Summary I gave to you with duration of time, right? Management. How to case a treat a case of PCM poisoning? This is the most important. Okay. and i told you it's a very important antioxidant is the one which is going to neutralize napq ui so first of all in the treatment we give tablet charcoal but this we give only the patient come within half an hour after ingestion because for half an hour the pcm may be in the stomach but after that it get absorbed so it should be given immediately but if the patient come later on maybe after 10 hour then they got no role should be given only when when the patient come within half an hour okay and after that what we give is a style system this is the antidote of choice and a style system write down make a box of it this is the one which is going to produce glutathione So it act by glutathione, which I mentioned to you. So glutathione is getting produced by N-acetyl cysteine. The so golden line to remember: N-acetyl cysteine is the drug of choice for PCM poisoning because it increases glutathione. Make a box of this line. so whole summary is gi phase renal phase hepatic phase and resolution and acetyl cysteine <coughs> which produces glutathione the whole pcm poisoning is squeezed in five words 
फेज वन अप टू वन डे जी आई फेज फेज टू वन टू थ्री दिस इज रीनम थ्री टू फोर हिपैटिक देन आफ्टर एन रिजोल्यूशन ट्रीटमेंट विद इन हाफ एन आवर चारकोल एन एन स्टाइल सिस्टीन विच इज गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस ग्लूटाथ लिवर कैंसर वी टॉक अबाउट ऑनकोलॉजी पैथोलॉजी ऑल्सो बेनाइन लिवर ट्यूमर हिपैटिक एडिनोमा is a benign tumor occur in more in women as compared to men causes oral contraceptive most common cause that's why it is more common in females female taking oral contraceptive pills so they are found predominantly in young ladies who have long history of oral contraceptive anabolic steroid males but anabolic steroid are less commonly taken as compared to oral contraceptive pills so that's the reason why it is much more common in females i hope you have written it women benign ocp anabolic steroid the key word in this are benign women ocp anabolic steroids very simple they tend to develop otherwise normal liver highly vascular this is a very very important question from pathology they tend to regress if ocp is stopped but this is a very very important line how patient come to us abdominal pain in right upper quadrant they tend to rupture in pregnancy and that will lead to when it is rupture it will lead to immediately intraperitoneal hemorrhage bleeding into the entire it will spread in entire peritoneum patient will suddenly collapse because of massive bleeding but in this the only keyword the keyword to remember are highly vascular tumor it can rupture during pregnancy and can cause intra abdominal bleeding the other key words to be remember don't forget it highly vascular tumor i hope you have written it and again repeating that if somebody is slow in writing then you can write a first line take a click the rest of the lines which you are not able to write you can write later on after the class in this investigation alpha fetal proteins are normal and if you do ct mri you can get vascular tumor the point i mentioned to you that they are highly vascular and in one more thing in such cases uh, you will never like to put a needle the fnac is not done 
why it is a highly vascular tumor. So you can simply do CT MRI which can demonstrate vascular tumor. Treatment resection. Resection is the treatment. That means surgery. Okay. Golden line to remember. A young or middle-aged lady taking OCP develop hepatic mass. That is hepatic adenoma. The whole thing is squeezed into one word. Hepatic adenoma, you can even add it. Vascular tumor. Vascular tumor. Okay. I hope it's a lovely summary. The whole thing is squeezed in one word. A middle or young or middle aged lady taking OCP develop hepatic mass. That is hepatic adenoma which is a highly vascular benign tumor. Second is cavernous hemangioma. They are the most common liver lesion. Typically 30 to 50 years of the age. Often they are multiple. That means if this is the liver, then they are multiple. They are abnormal plexus of vessels. Benign tumor are thought to be congenital malformation that enlarge by ectasia. We have certain vessel. They tend to enlarge by ectasia. What is ectasia? Dilatation of any tubular structure, physiological. Any tube which get dilated is ectasia. Okay. So they, they dilate they become bigger by ectasia. So what are the key word? 30 to 50 years, multiple, and they are abnormal plexus of the blood vessel which enlarges by ectasia. First keyword, second keyword, third, fourth, and fifth keyword. There are five keywords in this particular slide which include pathology also. Well, you can diagnose by ultrasonography or CT scan. Or we can use contrast enhancement. So ultrasound or CT scan is the one what we can say. Rest all you need not write. You simply write CT scan or ultrasound are good enough to diagnose. This is cavernous hemangiomas, you can see, all red, red, red. If you want, you can take a picture. I hope you have taken the picture. Let me enlarge it more. Treatment again resection. Surgery. Remove them. Now we talk about malignant tumor. The liver, so far we have done the benign tumor. Now malignant tumor, hepatoma. That is hepatocellular carcinoma. HCC, they write. Hepatocellular carcinoma or hepatoma, same. Etiology is hepatitis B and C infection, cirrhosis of liver. Chronic alcoholism. 
फूड कंटेमेंट एफ्लाटॉक्सिन इस क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम पी एस एम ऑल्सो प्रिवेंटिव एंड सोशल मेडिसिन डेराइव फ्रॉम एसपर जिलस फ्लेवर्स माइक्रोबायोलॉजी क्वेश्चन primary biliary cirrhosis this is a very very important slide write it down i'll give you time to write down so now all of you speak wherever my pen goes it read b n c and cirrhosis chronic alcoholism food contaminant what aflatoxin derived from aspergillus flavors and primary biliary cirrhosis others are heredity hemochromatosis anabolic steroid oral contraceptive alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency tyrosinosis and glycogen storage disease type 1 right down out of this this is the single most important don't forget hemochromatosis single most important okay the clinical feature make a box hepatomegaly is the most common finding abdominal brew can be there ascites pneumogeny is mainly due to portal hypertension make a box of this also liver is enlarged spleen is enlarged ascites and brew is there make a box of these four words hepatomegaly brew ascites and pneumogeny signs of chronic liver disease will be there but cherry syndrome can be there about this i'm going to talk later later on but as of now just write down but cherry syndrome jaundice is a late feature jaundice is a late feature is not a very early feature okay written well this is a v v v i i i p p topic if examiner has to ask you about something about liver tumor he is going to ask you this table hepatocellulocarcinoma paraneoplastic syndrome hypoglycemia that means blood sugar value goes down Erythrocytosis, increase RBC count because it secrete erythropoietin. EP stand for erythropoietin. The question can be asked to this way also: Which tumor can cause increase? Which can lead to erythrocytosis? Which tumor can lead to increase erythropoietin? Answer remain. One of the answer remain is hepatoma. hypercalcemia because it secretes pth like polypeptide it secretes pth like polypeptide increase cholesterol porphyria cutanea don't forget this okay very very important so since a very important so i want you to repeat wherever my pen goes what is this what is this what is this and porphyria cutanea tart okay i hope you have written it 
Now I have a question for you. I talked to you regarding porphyria cutanea type. Question is, tell me in which type of hepatitis, in which type of hepatitis you get porphyria cutanea tarda? Which hepatitis? Write down the answer. You can come in the chat box. Quickly write down. In which type of hepatitis you get porphyria cutanea tarda? Well, I'm getting answers. Well, many of you answered rightly. The answer is hepatitis C. It's a very frequently asked question. Okay, hepatitis C. How we diagnose the liver carcinoma? Increase alpha fetoprotein. Very, very important question from oncology. Alpha fetoprotein are raised. Alpha fetoprotein. Well, in keys AFP, alpha fetoprotein, it is seen in, is again a very VIP question. Causes where it is alpha fetoprotein are raised are hepatoma, hepatoblastoma, liver. The two conditions, hepatoma and hepatoblastoma. GIT tumor including CA stomach. Then non seminiferous germ cell tumor of ovary and testes, choriocarcinoma, embryonal carcinoma, yolk sac tumor, they are the non germ cell tumors. And whenever this question will come, it's increasing in all except. Except will be seminoma. In seminoma, it is not increased. It's a very, very all except the level of free alpha fetoprotein is raised in all except this except will be seminoma. Okay. I hope you have written it. So we can do liver scan, we can do. Biopsy is the most confirmatory. So screening we do by alpha fetoprotein and confirm by biopsy. Make a box of this line. And you also make a box of the condition where alpha fetoprotein was raised, which I've shown you. This is a very, very important box. I hope all of you have made this box. Treatment is radiofrequency ablation, RFA, PEI, local injection of ethanol into tumor or resection surgery. Radiofrequency ablation, local injection of ethanol and PEI stands for percutaneous. Ethanol injection. Percutaneous ethanol injection.
okay golden line to remember a patient of so so liver suddenly deteriorates clinically with rays alpha fetoprotein we are dealing with hepatoma we are dealing with hepatoma then we talk about hepatic angiosarcoma they are due to vinyl chloride arsenic or thorotrast we read it that this can lead to certain benign tumor also but now we are coming that they can also lead to malignant remember this is malignant very aggressive and poor prognosis patient die within a year very aggressive due to vinyl chloride arsenic or thorotrast they arise malignant from endothelial origin they can have metastasis mostly to lungs and spleen it's very unusual to have metastasis in spleen but something unique it can even go to spleen also is a endothelial in origin very aggressive can go to lungs and maybe spleen also aggressive and patient die very fast golden line to remember liver mass in a patient who has long exposure to vinyl chloride arsenic or thorotrast hepatic angiosarcoma golden line to remember i hope you have written it hepatoblastoma one more it's a germ cell tumor it's a most common liver of children usually below 18 months and it may be associated with familial adenomatous 18 month is just one and a half year old child just see infant small child is usually fatal within a fever if not removed surgically the patient has other problem familial adenomatous polyposis and black wills villen syndrome other problems can occur in this patient but is a very aggressive die large space containing blood space is lined by single layer of endothelium and this is hepatic parenchyma okay you can draw the diagram or you do can take a click of the picture i hope you have done it germ cell tumor in a child is hepatoblastoma golden line to remember golden line squeezes the entire topic in just one line cholangiocarcinoma is a rare malignant arises from intra and extra hepatic bile duct bile duct may be in the liver or outside liver cholangio carcinoma intrahepatic appear like a tree like mass that grows along the biliary system 
टिपिकली एक्सटेंसिव एक्स्ट्रा इंट्रा हिपेटिक मेटास्टेसिस तो पॉइंट वो नोटेड इट कैन ग्रो इंट्रा और एक्स्ट्रा हिपेटिक and it can have a intrahepatic metastasis because it grows like a tree along the biliary system look like this beautiful picture here is the lining this is intrahepatic lining and this the this the tumor tumor extrahepatic extra hepatic we are seeing so we are getting intra or extra hepatic biliary duct tumor risk factor include primary sclerosing conjunctivitis this is a single most important don't forget this line make a box of this fibropolycystic liver disease liver fluke infection endemic areas but out of this this is a single most important don't forget this prognosis is very poor they die very fast golden line to remember tumor arising in a intra or extra hepatic bile duct in a patient of primary sclerosing cholangitis or ulcerative colitis cholangiocarcinoma remember the primary this primary sclerosing cholangitis and ulcerative colitis they are often together rather it is a rule if you get a one patient of primary sclerosing cholangitis you have to rule out ulcerative colitis it's such a important line okay and in this patient the patient can develop cholangiocarcinoma so they you, they are all related to each other so if there is one thing is there you must investigate for other two also finally we talk about metastatic tumor the most uh, metastasis the most common malignant tumor of the adult liver 20 time more common than the primary tumor and fact liver is a, is the most is second most common site of metastasis now come the question for you from oncology what is the most common site of secondaries liver is the, is the second most common site of metastasis but my question is which is the most common site of metastasis write down the answer in your copy quickly i'm getting so many answers good very good very good batch the answer is lymph nodes lymph node is the most common site second is liver okay liver is the second most common site after lymph node make a box of this line so now we take a tea break of 20 minutes exactly after 20 minutes we meet and i hope you all enjoy it and i also hope that you are making the boxes okay and these boxes are good enough and uh, we take a tea break of 20 minutes thank you very much
so welcome back now the next topic of discussion is but chiari syndrome well what is the definition but before i discuss the definition you will never understand but chiari syndrome unless you know the anatomy so first i'll discuss uh, what the definition then we go to basic concept of anatomy then we'll integrate when you talk about definition of but chiari syndrome hepatic venous outflow obstruction that means there is some obstruction to liver blood flow maybe in the hepatic venules maybe large hepatic vein or inferior vena cava and a very important line sinusoidal obstruction is not included in the definition first you write down what i have written and make a box also that i am going to explain to you what exactly is right now i know you have understood only 20% 80% you have not understood but you write it down then we first read the basic concept and at me then we we'll discuss i hope by now you have written it okay so let's learn the basic histology or anatomy h e stand for histological examination of the liver if we take a biopsy of the liver it is like this lobule central vein portal tract this is cv stand for central vein cv is central vein here is the portal tract which has bile ductule bd stand for bile ductule branch of portal vein and branch of hepatic artery this is a portal tract and here are the liver cells hepatocytes and here this is the sinusoid sinusoid is the capillary where the blood goes and ultimately we all know all the central vein they combine and the center all central vein in the liver ultimate blood come to small hepatic venules hepatic venules ultimately many hepatic venules they combine hepatic venules and they combine to make hepatic vein and this hepatic vein drains into inferior vena cava and this inferior vena cava goes to right atrium this is right atrium now i'm giving you full screen you can write it down i hope it is visible very clearly yeah i hope by now you have drawn it good now look stop writing try to understand the basic anatomy when we say that but carries syndrome okay 
when we talk about beard carry syndrome there is obstruction hepatic venous obstruction ultimately blood is coming from hepatic vein going into inferior cava somewhere obstruction is there obstruction can be level at the level of hepatic venule look into hepatic venule this one maybe large hepatic vein this one or maybe inferior vena cava point to be noted these are sinusoids they are not included in this they are excluded and one more question this sinusoid we are talking about this sinusoid here the blockage occurs in cirrhosis of liver so that's why this is not included in the bud carry syndrome with this small basic of anatomy most important this is the most important question in that in bud carry syndrome sinusoids are not included obstruction to sinusoid is not included this is a rank number 1 getting question hepatic venules are involved hepatic veins are involved in inferior vena cava is also involved but sons are not next point one more thing which i look into this we have a hepatic artery branch of hepatic artery we have a branch of portal vein and blood from portal vein come to sinusoid blood from artery come to sinusoid point to be noted rank number 1 question is this rank number 1 question liver so here we are getting mix mixture of here we are getting mixture of arterial and venous blood is coming liver is the only organ in the body where mixing of the arterial and venous blood occurs nowhere else this happens so friends we got some rank number 1 getting question one is liver is the only something unique about uh, write down unique about liver is number 1 mixing of arterial and venous blood occurs the mixing of arterial and venous blood and number 2 sinusoids they are not included sinusoid obstruction is not included not included in bud carry syndrome make a box of this line okay arterial and venous blood mixing occur and sinusoid are not included so i told you as i ka obstruction can occur at three sides hepatic vein obstruction is the most common site obstruction can occur at inferior vena cava and obstruction can occur in small branches of hepatic veins let's take one by one so as i've shown you the picture again same thing first site now out of this i told you number one is hepatic venules second was hepatic vein and third is inferior vena cava but hepatic vein is the most common site that's the idea of understanding the basic concept which people are not clear that's why a lot of confusion now there is no confusion at all let's talk about site of obstruction first one hepatic vein with the commonest site is hepatic vein what are the important causes pregnancy very very important question oral contraceptive pills point to be noted that oral contraceptive pills have created certain problem in malignancy also both benign and malignant but now it is adding to to hepatic vein because oral contraceptive themselves they can lead to increase coagulation
इनक्रीज कोशन हेपेटोसेलर मेलेग्नेंसी रिमेंबर वेन आई टॉक टू यू रिगार्डिंग हेपेटोसेलर कैंसर आई टोल्ड यू इट कैन लीड टू बर्ड कियरी सिंड्रोम तो लिवर कैं बी सी ब्लड कैरी सिंड्रोम एंड लिवर कैंसर स्पेशली हेपेटोसेलर कार्सिनोमा कैन लीड टू कैन इन्वेड हेपेटिक वेन एंड दे कैन लीड टू ऑब्सट्रक्शन हेमाटोलॉजिकल पी एन एच एंड पोलिसमिया वीरा दे आर रैंक वन क्वेश्चन एंड दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन पी एन एच पारोक्समल नॉक्टर्नल हिमोग्लोबिन यूरिया नॉक्टर्नल हीमोग्लोबिन यूरिया डोंट फॉरगेट आउट ऑफ ऑल दीज ऑफकोर्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कार्सनोमा एंड पिल्स दे थ्री आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट they are rank 1 question so i hope since the very important please revise wherever my pen goes that is hepatic vein obstruction commonest site pregnancy oral contraceptive hepatocellular carcinoma pnh पोलिसाइथीमिया वीरा ओके सेकेंड इज इन्फीरियर बेरकावा अगेन हेपेटोसल कार्सिनोमा इज ए कैंसर कैन इन्वेड मे बी हेपेटिक वेन इट कैन इवन इन्वेड इन्फीरियर बेरकावा ऑफ ऑल्सो दिस इज लिवर कैंसर एंड फाइनली स्मॉल ब्रांचेस Hepat veno occlusive disease very very important question and azathioprin don't forget this is a rank one question this is a rank one question veno occlusive disease it involves the small branches of hepatic vein and this is so called bush tea disease this is a type of tea taken by the african some of the african tribes they contain this pyrolizidine alkaloid in the bush and that induce fibrosis in the small venules no nobody going to ask you the detail but this just remember this were two words in this particular slide remember we know occlusive disease vod and second is azathioprine make a box of these two words so we know occlusive disease and azathioprine are the two key word which can induce small branches small branches of hepatic veins can be can be this thing obstructed okay the so key word only two key words so this is a box which i made ask you to make but it's lovely we know occlusive disease bush t disease and as a thapin very very important box this is very this is a rank number 1 question remember they are obstructing small hepatic venules pathophysiology liver become acutely congested with development of portal hypertension ascites and varices so we are getting portal hypertension why Let's learn the anatomy. Let's correlate this pathophysiology with anatomy. Let's correlate with anatomy. How come? This the liver. This liver. This is the hepatic vein. Now I'm just drawing the gross hepatic vein. It is entering into inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. and i told you common side of blockage is hepatic vein so let's say hepatic vein get obstructed now the blood flow will be obstructive blood cannot go so ultimately whole blood will accumulate in the liver definitely blockage is there okay 
remember liver flow liver blood flow is about 1000 to around 1200 ml of the blood goes to liver every minute this blood is not able to come with us our liver will swell liver will enlarge and there will be increase in the this ultimate blood is going via portal vein portal vein blood is going into capillaries and ultimate so entry this liver this is the liver blood is going via portal vein going out via hepatic vein in a very nutshell ultimately sinusoid central capillaries and this thing so when this will be blocked this is a back pressure all all over and there will be increase portal vein pressure and that lead to portal hypertension and that will lead to well liver get a large congested so we'll get painful we get painful tender liver acutely painful i added the word acute tender liver suddenly within a span of few hours acutely painful and it is really very painful if you happen to see a patient if they really cry with pain was very very painful acutely within a span of hours maybe one or two days so now you are clear about it it's acutely word congested portal hypertension esophageal varices ascites and rapidly liver failure permanent liver failure will also happen all liver is congested suddenly patient will go into fulminant liver failure abdominal discomforts ascites are the main presenting feature because at time this blockage occurs slowly also if it occurs suddenly sudden pain but sometime gradually gradually obstruction occur in chronic stage it may go to cirrhosis of liver but by majority of time they come with the acute presentation so in nutshell they develop portal hypertension they develop a fulminant liver failure are the two thing you got to remember in this portal hypertension and fulminant liver failure FLF stand for fulminant liver failure. Make a box of these two word: portal hypertension, fulminant liver failure. Okay. So pathology congest initially congestive hepatomegaly. Liver is congested. Liver will enlarge later on. Cardiac cirrhosis. this is the classical word and this is the rank number 1 question the question they ask nutmeg liver is liver liver is seen in which type of condition answer is cardiac cirrhosis cardiac so we use the term cardiac cirrhosis anything which have per the blood outflow we call as cardiac remember even right heart failure right heart failure will also lead to back pressure So this lead to a type of congestive hepatomegaly occur in right heart failure, <laughs> and in the pathology you get nut mag liver. So point to be noted, rank number one question: What is nut mag liver? Is a congestive hepatomegaly due to any cardiac lesion or any blockage in the blood flow? So now what happened? again rank one question what we say centri lobular congestion necrosis nut mag liver okay done but zone now come the top rank question even people from aims delhi aims also don't know the answer this question which i am telling you we get i told you chronic passive congestion occur in heart failure especially right heart failure right down chronic passive congestion occur in right heart failure and the first thing is involved is zone 3 zone 3 i discuss in my previous class but many of you joined today for the first time 
let me explain to you what do what do you mean by zone one two and three look we come back to our diagram which we read it which we read it just now which we made the diagram yeah this one well i may make enlarge this is the portal track okay this is the central vein this part this part which is around the central vein this is zone 3 this is zone 3 this part which is near the, the portal tract this is zone 1 and midway this is zone 2 so we divide traditionally liver histology into zone 1 2 and 3 One is near the portal tract, zone in between, and zone three is near the central vein. Okay, when we talk about congestion, it primarily congestion, congestive. Whenever liver are congested, first the part to be involved is part three, and second alcohol. These two. they primarily involve the zone 3 which is around the central vein zone 2 rank 1 question yellow fever yellow fever this is a universal question zone 2 yellow fever zone 3 congestive any congestion or alcohol and zone 1 is this zone 1 it is involved in viral hepatitis vh10 for viral hepatitis or in cirrhosis liver also mainly with a zone 1 is involved so now we can nicely correlate histology anatomy with pathology with medicine and pathophysiology with this background now we understood that in congestive condition zone 3 will be involved okay uh, now we are much wiser knowing the basic concept so friends we got the answer of zone 3 congestion and necrosis and there will be some bleeding because of congestion some bleeding may occur in zone 3 and we may get mortal appearance so called nutmeg you can see lovely chassis some mortal appearance is just like little bit so you can see up and down up and down nut mac liver just remember nut mac liver this is the one word rank one question nobody know most of people are not aware nut mac liver will happen in any type of congestive congestive hepatopathy hepatopathy this is a box this is the box it itself hepatic congestive nutmeg liver this question from pathology question from pathology zone 3 the clinical feature of what carry it can be acute sub acute or chronic blockage may be sudden it may be slow or it may be chronic also acute usually occur when it is due to embolism and these two occur duly due to if thrombus formation is occurring patient come with suddenly onset of gross ascites with abdominal pain and there can be fulminant hepatic failure at a point i mentioned there may be hematemesis also point to be noted very carefully may patient may have ascites patient may have acute abdominal pain pulmonary hepatic liver or hematemesis write it down
आई होप बाय नाउ यू हैव रिटर्न इट ओके पॉइंट यू नोटेड दिस कैन कम एज ए हिमेटमेसिस आल्सो लैब फाइंडिंग द फर्स्ट इनिशियल टेस्ट इज अल्ट्रासाउंड विद डॉपलर फ्लो स्टडी इज द बेस्ट इनिशियल टेस्ट and to confirm you do hepatic venogram this is confirmatory this is a confirmatory test okay in hepatic venogram you get typical spider web look into this if i can enlarge just just like spider web in hepatic venogram what we get is spider web appearance spider web appearance is there okay and in which condition you got vika tree in winters i hope you know the answer tree in winter appearance answer is with you answer is with you we can also go for inferior venography we can also go for inferior venography golden line to remember sudden onset of severe abdomen pain with ascites in a young lady taking oral contraceptive pill but carrying syndrome golden line to remember so we move further next topic is wilson disease this is a v v v i i i p p p topic it's very important topic this topic is asked throughout the world so let's see what the definition of what the definition of disorder of copper metabolism and there is excess of copper excess of copper is deposited in the body especially liver brain and eye liver brain and eye the mnemonic is b e l bell brain eyes and liver is the mnemonic but it is a recessive disorder well when we are talking liver disease but the age will be 3 to 40 year of age usually late childhood it means somewhere around you can say 15 to 20 years or maybe 10 to 20 years late childhood why it is so important to talk about so now we can see different age even we got cancer at the age of 18 months we got cancer at the age of young adult you got okay, we got cancer with an lady taking oral contraceptive pills now we are getting liver disease in 3 to 40 years it has a special meaning that i that why i spend 2 minutes but this is a box 
तो नाउ लेट्स लर्न अबाउट बायोकेमिस्ट्री बायोकेमिस्ट्री ऑफ लेवर ऑफ कॉपर मेटाबॉलिज्म फिजियोलॉजी एंड बायोकेमिस्ट्री फिजियोलॉजी एंड बायोकेमिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉपर मेटाबॉलिज्म फ्लो चार्ट इन द जी आई टी वी एव ए डाइट्री कॉपर एंड इट इज एब्जॉर्ब वंस इट इज एब्जॉर्ब इट कम टू ब्लड इन द ब्लड इट इमिडिएटली यूनाइट विथ एल्ब्यूमिन सो लेट मी ड्रॉ ए डायग्राम फॉर यू दिस इज द जी आई टी एंड इन फैक्ट कॉपर इज इज एब्जॉर्ब इन स्टमक और इन द डिओडनम दिस कॉपर एब्जॉर्ब गोज टू द ब्लड इन द ब्लड इट कंबाइन विद कॉपर विद एल्ब्यूमिन ए फॉर एल्ब्यूमिन एल्ब्यूमिन सो नाउ कॉपर एल्ब्यूमिन इन द ब्लड दिस विल कम टू लेवर दिस द लेवर लेवर कॉपर एंड एल्ब्यूमिन कम्स कॉपर विल गो टू लेवर एंड इन द लेवर कॉपर विल will remember albumin will stay outside it will stay outside now copper will combine with alpha globulin alpha globulin and this combination is known as ceruloplasmin this is known as ceruloplasmin this is the one molecule biochemistry you should remember so ceruloplasmin is being made in the in the, in the in the liver again it will come back to the blood the point to be noted copper is going to the liver cell here it is get converted into ceruloplasmin again come back to the blood so this is a circulating ceruloplasm is a type of circulating circulating form of copper the way we have a uh, ferritic ka this is transferrin com combined ka combined with transferrin is a is a transportable form of iron here we have a circulating form of copper is ceruloplasm it's so important i hope you are clear about this lovely flow chart now in wilson disease there is a mutation of gene now gene 8 atp 7b on chromosome 13 this you should remember very very important question from genetics the mutation line in atp 7b easy to remember atp 7b chromosome 13 now what happen now this if mutation occur it hinders copper metabolism by reducing the formation and secretion of ceruloplasm well good so let go back so now what happen problem lies here this copper is not able to get attached to alpha globulin that means the ceruloplasm will not be formed even it is being formed even it is being formed it is not released from the liver so what happen the, there will be excess amount of copper is not getting utilized the copper level will go very very high and it will go and get deposit in which place brain eye and liver so that's why this a copper which was supposed to be supposed to be metabolized in the liver not getting so excess copper will go and definitely ceruloplasm level will go down why it is not getting form even it getting form it is not getting release that the basic physiology and biochemistry why ceruloplasm is reduced that is the basic physiology and biochemistry why excess copper occurs because it's not getting utilized in the liver this excess and copper will go and get 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 attached to bel and lead to all the problems 
Now copper is a pro-oxidant will cause damage to hepatic tissues through the free radical. Even iron excess. Now remember, excess of copper will reduce free radical. Excess of iron will also cause free radical release. And now I hope you know the basic general pathology that they are free radicals. They are the one which are going to cause a lot of damage. So ultimately, liver, copper, and basal ganglia in the in, in the brain, uh, in the brain, in the eyes. I talked to you regarding eyes, but in the eyes, cornea. In the brain is basal ganglia, basal ganglia. So the cornea will be affected, eyes, and basal ganglia. And what are you going to do? I am going to discuss in the coming slides. So we have narrowed down from eyes to cornea. In the brain, we have narrowed down to basal ganglia. So, liver disease, Parkinson-like feature in young adult. This is the classical finding. Make a box of this line. It is such an important point. Parkinson-like feature in young adults. Well, we all know very well, Parkinson is a disease of above 60 years. That we know very well. Okay. But suppose you are getting, you are sitting, suppose I am sitting in my OPD. A 25 year old boy comes and he has Parkinson like feature. Parkinson like feature. Then I quote a line from Harrison, 21st edition. The line says if you are getting one patient below 40 years, with the young man below 40 years with feature of Parkinson like, you should always, always investigate for Wilson disease. It's such an important line. That's why age is very important. Usually patient will be having some feature of liver disease also. Now suppose a patient come to me right now. A 20, 20 year old boy with Parkinson like feature. Typically having this, this type of so called. You, you can say this. Okay. Tremor are there. Right. So I'm thinking 25 year old boy. Parkinson like feature. I'm thinking Wilson disease. What should I do? I should immediately send the patient to my eye specialist. Eye specialist, he will look for KF ring. KF ring which are seen in cornea. Okay, if they are there, it make my diagnosis very easy. So I can diagnose the condition in five minutes only. KF ring, the eye specialist can just see in one minute only. So, in case the patient come to you in five minutes, you can make a diagnosis. Is a case. Okay. Now, I talk to you regarding liver involvement is there. Jaundice will be there. There will be elevated liver level. Lakin, rank one question. Even people, I asked this question to three lakhs people. Nobody answer. Alkaline phosphate level is low. Cannot this rank one question? Alk. ALP level is less than normal. Less than normal rank one question is this. In which condition ALP level is reduced? Uh, in liver disease. Normally liver disease ALP level are increased. But here we have got liver disease with less than normal. Rank number one question. Even Delhi AIMS students, they do not know the answer to this question. You know. Because I want you to be in Delhi Ames. Not a bad offer. Yes. So, alkaline phosphate less than normal with portal hypertension. Okay, with cirrhosis, portal hypertension. It may sometimes come with acute hepatitis, fulminant hepatitis, chronic active, CAI stands for chronic. active hepatitis or maybe cirrhosis. Point to be noted, it can manifest as acute, fulminant, chronic or cirrhosis. But the only and of course Parkinson like feature and KF ring in the eyes and something unique. So this slide has got a lot of questions. A lot of questions are there. And out of this, this is the single most important. Isko bhulna dandani aparad hai. Don't forget. Don't forget that alkaline phosphate is less than normal in ALP or is uh, Wilson disease.
this is the typical what we get a copper deposit in the liver kf ring golden line to remember which i talked to you which is there in the eyes in the look into this picture lovely picture this is the golden the copper deposit in the upper and the lower part of the cornea and in the cornea we mention again one more question question from ophthalmology desmet membrane this again a very commonly asked membrane in the cornea what part of cornea desmet membrane question from ophthalmology integration is in the upper and lower quadrant desmet membrane is a very frequently asked question desmet membrane don't forget this line so other features they are vip topic vip renal calculi amino acid urea renal tubular acidosis type 2 type 2 this is one of the most important we it can even have hyperparathyroid like manifestation out of all these four this is the single most rta type 2 renal tubular acidosis type 2 don't forget this out of four this is the most important due to this patient can have amino acid urea in what it is hemolytic anemia second most important thing so don't forget two thing renal tubular acidosis type 2 and hemolytic anemia cholelithiasis hepatoma testicular atrophy can occur and testicular atrophy will lead to infertility so out of the nine don't forget rta type 2 and don't forget hemolytic anemia diagnosis clinically neuropsychiatric feature in a young patient i told you any young boy young patient coming with liver disease and some neuropsychiatric or parkinson like feature what the actual word they use is neuropsychiatric but again we can say parkinson like feature parkinson like feature kf ring is the first thing to be seen and you can confirm by low serum seroplasmin now you know the basic why seroplasmin level will be reduced because you know the basic basic concept of physiology and biochemistry of copper metabolism and believe me this is not known to almost 3 lakh people don't know what the basic mechanism of low serum seroplasmin this is such important point i hope you have written it but confirmatory test is liver biopsy elevated hepatic copper concentration more than 250 microgram per gram of dry liver you don't need to remember this thing just remember this is the one thing confirm it as a liver biopsy and you see for the copper level so liver biopsy the confirmatory in the first screening test this will be so if you are suspecting wilson send for the serum seroplasmin level and later on you would like to confirm you like to confirm by biopsy treatment first line is copper chelator copper chelator which are going to remove copper from the body which include dipenthamine and trientrine then we want copper should not be absorbed we use zinc zinc inhibit copper absorption of git and ammonium tetra uh, mobilate this also reduce copper this cause causes reduce absorption in, as well as increase excretion in urine and finally hepatic transplantation but usual question is about these three drugs these three drugs 
तो डी पेंसलामीन एंड ट्राइंटीन दे आर द कॉपर किलेटर एंड तो फर्स्ट वी ऑल फर्स्ट लाइन ट्रीटमेंट इज डी पेंसामीन एंड ट्राइंटीन एंड लेटर ऑन बी एड जिंक विच विल इनिबेट कॉपर इज ऑप्शन इन जी आई टी गोल्डन लाइन टू रिमेंबर मेक ए बॉक्स ऑफ ए यंग चाइल्ड और यंग एडल्ट प्रेजेंटिंग विद लिवर डिजीज पार्किसाइन लीव लाइक विच एफ के एफ इज विल्सन डिजीज होर विल्सन डिजीज इज स्क्वीज इन टू दिस बॉक्स डन हिमोक्रोमोटोसिस वी 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 आई 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 पी 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 टॉपिक यू वी ऑलवेज गेटिंग क्वेश्चन ऑन हिमोक्रोमोटोसिस लेस लर्न द बेसिक्स दिस इज ए डिसऑर्डर ऑफ आयरन डिसऑर्डर एक्सेस ऑफ आयरन एब्सॉर्ब पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड इन विल्सन डिजीज एक्सेस ऑफ कॉपर वाद प्रॉब्लम इसे एक्सेस ऑफ आयरन इज देर आयरन ओवरलोड अकर्स एंड विच डैमेज मैनी ऑर्गन कॉपर एक्सेस डैमेज आईस बी ब्रेन बेजल गैंगलिया ई आई कॉर्निया डेस्टमेंट मेमरी इन एल्फा लेवर हेयर वी हैव गॉट मैनी ऑर्गन द प्रॉब्लम इज आयरन इज अगेन रिसेसिव remember wilson was also recessive is one of the most common inherited disease as well as one of the most common inborn defect in metabolism point to be noted very carefully okay actually a3 associated more in males as compared to females now i have very simple question to ask you why it is much more in males as compared to female what the reason behind that quickly answer the question in chat box why it is more in males just see male 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 case by case in case in case in case quickly write down the answer why it is more in males yeah well i'm getting very good answers L huge list is there well the answer is in females remember it is a stage of iron overload state in females they have menstruation which causes blood loss rather 80% of the ladies are they have iron deficiency so they never go into overload state because every month especially in the reproductive age group the lady will be losing blood so there is no they are deficient of iron so there is no chance of going into overload state this is the reason menstrual is a protective for hemochromatosis now in this there is unrestrictive iron absorption in small intestine which mutation mutation occurs in heredity hemochromatosis gene so called uh, h f e gene what they call us h f e gene don't forget this okay and mut mutants are h2 82y and h6 chromosome 6 cannot afford to forget this this and this remember in wilson disease chromosome 3 was there 13 was there 
देयर एक जीन वॉज ए टी पी सेवन बी कैन नॉट एफोर्ड टू फॉर गेट दिस हेयर इट इज सी टू एटी टू वाई एन एच सिक्सटी थ्री डी क्रोमोजोम सिक्स ये आपको याद करना है कैन नॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम जेनेटिक्स दे आर द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम जेनेटिक्स सो एक्सेस ऑफ आयरन इज ऑब्जॉर्ब ओके एंड दिस इज जो एक्सेस आयरन दिस विल गेट एब्जॉर्ब इन जी आई टी Every year, half to one gap of iron is accumulated. Every year, point five to one gram iron is accumulated, and iron again free radical. You remember, I told you, I told you that even the copper generate ega free radicals. They also generate free radicals. With the result, they cause, they lead to, they lead to damage to. cells okay free radical damage tissues anything special only this i want you to notice this 0.5 to 1 gram of iron deposit every year extra iron is there in the body and once this level is more than 20 gram then we start getting feature of hemochromatosis even if i say 0.5 to 1 gram that means you need about 20 to 40 year of the age before we start getting feature of hemochromatosis so that's why these problem occur somewhere around 30s and 40s so at the age of 40 year men can remember In twenty 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 gram is there, the feature will start. The patient will have at the age of forty year they can present to so around forty years. This is in contrast Wilson disease, which was there in three to forty year. Here forty year onward, because it's in copper start damaging immediately, but but iron need minimum twenty gram. Okay, so they can lead to liver cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma. are the two potential complication uh, which which ha organ heart pancreas and liver note it down or take a click 20 g is a important question 40 year is a important question heart pancreas and liver is a question cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma they are the key words that you got to remember so let me give a yellow coloration 20 gram 40 years heart pancreas and liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma they are the key words that you got to remember cannot afford to forget these words i give you some time you can click or you can write down at least write down the key words quickly don't forget okay let's start this is the typical iron this iron absorb we stain question from pathology which stain we use prussian blue we use prussian blue for iron question from pathology the clinical feature cirrhosis with hepatomegaly point to be noted liver is enlarged point to be noted if cirrhosis occur due to hepatitis b or c it lead to shrunken liver but if it occur due to hemochromatosis or even alcohol also it can lead to hepatomegaly but definitely b and c shrunken liver means liver is small in size 
liver small in size. Heart, congestive heart failure is a type of restrictive cardiomyopathy. Very, very important. Skin, pigmentation and diabetes. That's why skin pigmentation with diabetes we call as bronze diabetes. This is the universal question. Bronze diabetes. So restrictive cardiomyopathy, gray color skin and diabetes we call as bronze diabetes. Because of colored skin with diabetes. Chassis, normal, and this is the total pigmented skin comparison. Hypogonadism, this is due to pituitary gland destruction. Point to be noted, testicular atrophy can contribute to this, but Pituitary gland involvement also contribute to hypogonadism. Impotence, loss of libido. And loss of libido in due to decreased testosterone level. Hepatoma can occur. It is a very, very important slide. Note it down or take a click. Point to be noted, pituitary gland is also getting involved. Testicular atrophy is also occurring. Hepatoma, this can lead to liver cancer. Arthritis, rank one question, which joint, second and third metacarpophalangeal joint? Rank one question, pseudo gout can occur. Look into the cannot afford. This is the one, rank one question. 99% students don't know about this particular point, which joints are involved. This is the rank one question. Pseudo gout can occur. Okay. I think I can move ahead. Let me remove if somebody want to click it. Yeah. Investigation, rank one question. Transferrin saturation. It is the best screening test. Write it down, VIP question. Transferrin saturation. How we really calculate? Let's learn the basic physiology and pathology. How we really calculate? Transferrin saturation is TS. Serum iron divided by TIBC. TIBC is total iron binding capacity. Total iron binding capacity. If the value more than 45% indicate iron overload state. There will be increased serum iron, increased serum ferritin. So transferrin saturation will be increased. Serum iron will be increased. Serum ferritin will be increased. Make a box of these three lines. Transferrin saturation increase. Serum iron increase, serum ferritin increase. Out of this, this is the single most important and not known to 99% people are not clear about concept of transferrin saturation. Done it? Total iron binding capacity is reduced. This again indicate iron overload state. Decrease serum lut LH and FSH. Why? Pituitary gland is destroyed, is involved, especially hypogonadism. That's the reason LH, FSH are reduced. 
that's why there is reduced libido. Rank number one question, RBC count is normal although serum iron is high. Rank one question. Is an iron overload state with normal RBC count? Rank one question. Nobody knows the answer. I asked to this three lakhs people. I asked three lakh people, tell me any condition you know of where serum ferritin high, serum iron high, but RBC count is normal. Nobody knows the answer. You know the answer that is primary hemochromatosis. So friend, TIBC reduce, LH, FSH reduce, and RBC count normal, but serum iron is high. Rank one question. Biopsy is done to confirm diagnosis, and you can see the iron content, nothing special about it. Remember, we have done biopsy in we have done biopsy in case of uh, Wilson disease also. This is just see hemochromatosis, rusty brown color, and you can see the Persian blue stain. I showed you the slide previously also. MRI the liver can be done screening test for relative. HFE gene testing for C28Y mutation. I told you, cannot afford to forget this line. Every patient should be screened for this. Every patient should be screened, a relative should be screened for HFE gene. Now, gold medal rank one question. These patients are risk of infection with sidrophilic organ. What do you mean by sidrophilic? There are certain bacteria which feed on iron. They love iron. They are this very important question from microbiology. Let's integrate medicine with micro. Vibrio vulnificus, Listeria monocytogen and Jersina enterocolitica. Don't forget if you want to get rank 1. Rank 1 in your any exam. So they are sidrophilic organisms, those organisms which love to eat iron. They love to feed iron. So definitely you can see, so lie die down. Vibrio vulnificus, Listeria and Yersinia enterocolitica. Rank one question. This is Vibrio vulnificus, flagellated organism. You can take a click if you want. This is Listeria monocytogen, again multi-flagellated organism. Yersinia enterocolitica, no flagella. They are all sidrophilic organisms. Nowadays, they show a lot of picture also, so you should know. Porphyria cutinea tarda can occur. Well, in which type of hepatitis porphyria cutinea tarda occurs? This question I asked previously also. Okay, the answer is hepatitis C. But this is a very, very important question. Porphyria cutinatarda, very, very important question. Remember, it occurs in hepatocellular carcinoma also. Most common cause of death in treated patient is hepatoma. 
most common cause of treat in untreated patient is congestive heart failure make a box of this two line hepatoma or congestive heart failure are the common cause of death in these patients treated patient hepatoma untreated congestive heart failure management venous section venous section means we remove one unit of blood unit of blood every week we take out the blood we remove the blood venous section now i have one question for you in which hematological malignancy we do venous section write down the answer you can come to chat box if you want to tell me quickly write down the answer well i'm getting answers the chat box i can see the answer of this question is polycythemia vera polycythemia vera here also the treatment is venous section golden line to remember cirrhosis diabetes skin pigmentation restrictive cardiomyopathy in middle aged men hemochromatosis primary hemochromatosis cannot afford to the whole hemochromatosis is squeezed in this particular box make a box of this also cirrhosis diabetes skin pigmentation restrictive cardiomyopathy middle aged men men and we know this more in men hemo primary hemochromatosis i hope you have written and make a box also and i am sure you are making making box of whatever i am writing liver abscess it can be pyogenic that is bacterial hydrated cyst or amoebic liver abscess okay let us take one by one pyogenic liver abscess bacteria they are more likely to happen in elderly diabetic and immunosuppress very obvious in all these because they have reduced immune response so elderly people diabetic and immunosuppress they usually come with fever abdominal pain and hepatomegaly jaundice is very rare something very unique something very unique liver is involved but without jaundice something unique so they primarily come with all like abscess fever pain and hepatomegaly also is usually tender hepatomegaly most frequent organism is e coli klebsiella don't forget these two don't forget these two point to noted e coli it was involved in which other disease so far what we read today write down the answer in which other disease e coli was involved what we read today write down the answer quickly in chat box
well the quickly write down the answer the answer is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis there can be other bacteria but they are two most don't forget these two in the lab leukos tlc count will be high that is for every bacterial infection raise esr chest x ray may re reveal elevation of diaphragm on the right side right side diaphragm will be raised why abscess is there this is the liver this is the chest now liver abscess is there so diaphragm will be raised why because liver abscess is there it will raise the diaphragm but we can confirm by ultrasonography ultrasonography multi loculated very very important line bacterial are usually multi loculated this is in contrast you can see multiple locules are there in contrast amoebic liver abscess are single very soon i will be talking to you regarding amoebic liver abscess they are usually single usually single okay so ultrasonography and then we can even aspiration for culture sensitivity we can do pus aspiration under ultrasonography you can send for culture and sensitivity you can go for culture sensitivity okay you can go for ct mri ct mri but one more thing i like to add question very important question although it's not a case of amoebic but definitely sometime we can get fungal infection which gives bull eye just see bull eye appearance this is bull eye appearance that we see in candida infection not in pyogenic bull eye very important question from very important question from radiology to so write down in which condition you get bull eye appearance in ultrasonography or ct scan that we so call candidiasis treatment anti antibiotic and you you can go for and you can go for and go for some aspiration also you don't need to write this thing forget just write antibiotic with this what is needed of course their name of antibiotic are given but they are no, nobody going to ask you but just write down antibiotic and you can do little bit of aspiration under ultrasonography golden line to remember a patient coming with high grade fever right upper quadrant pain with multi lobular abscess this the one point don't forget which is going to differentiate from amoebic liver abscess this is pyogenic liver abscess so patient having high grade fever right upper quadrant pain and multi lobular abscess which we can see very comfortably in ultrasonography this is pyogenic golden line to remember so the out of this also if you are getting this line if you are getting this line multi lobular abscess in a, in in ultrasonography you are dealing with pyogenic abscess hydrated cyst a very very important question is question from microbiology also medicine pediatric also parasitology also let's learn the basic parasitology 
and then we'll integrate with medicine, parasitology. So hydrated cysts is made by echinococcus gallinosis, so-called intestinal tapeworm, cystode, whatever you can say, all are the same. Okay. So this is the echinococcus gallinosis picture is there. You can take a click, head, neck, general mass, uterus, testes, uterus, but this is simple. You don't need to remember this, but this picture you should just say like a comma shape. Or in the exam, they will show you this picture and they identify the algorithm. Answer is echinococcus granulosis. Hydrated cysts, it contain, uh, is a structure that contain larval form of echinococcus. So what cyst we are talking about, which I'm going to discuss in the next slide, is a larva form of the echinococcus. It's not the adult form. Question for microbiology. Note it down. Done it. So it's a larval form of echinococcus gallinosis. They are present in the liver, most common site. They can be in lung and brain also. But commonest site is liver. Commonest site is liver. Now let's talk more about more about the cyst structure. It has got three layer: outer layer, intermediate, and inner, and inner, inner. Outer layer is derived from the host. Intermediate la la laminate layer. An inner layer is germinal layer. So it means this outermost is from the host, but these two are from the parasite. And in, out of the intermediate is laminated, and inner one is the germinal. This you should know. So organ are liver, lung, and brain, and the layer are outer, intermediate, and inner. Look into this lovely picture. Outermost from the host. Intermediate this, so this is the outermost. Outermost. This is the intermediate laminated layer. And the inner one is germinal layer. Germinal layer. Okay, so I hope you are clear about the three layers. And we are getting cyst inside and we got daughter cyst also. Okay. So, so I hope you are clear about it that outermost, innermost and intermediate. Look into, now closer. Host outermost. Then we have intermediate and then we have inner one, this one general. This is the intermediate level and this is the inner one. Point to be noted, germinal layer, it is this to which, look this one, inner one. Here are the cysts. They are known as daughter cyst. And in this we are getting protoscolax. This is a very important part of parasitology. You should know integration. Why I am spending time because there is a reason behind that. So knowing this structure is important. I think I have done try my level best to give you the diagram. Okay.
Now, as I told you, liver is the most common site. Infective agent is egg of Echinococcus granulosus. Portal of entry elementary canal. You should know this also. This total life cycle of a parasite. Egg is the infective and portal of entry is GIT. How come? Look into this. Write down. Dog excreta, it contains egg. It goes to grass, which has got eggs. It grass is eaten by the sheep. Egg develop into she uh, larva in the sheep liver. Egg develop into larva in sheep liver. And sheep liver is again eaten by the dog. Is again eaten by the dog. Dog is a definite host. So cycle is dog, sheep, dog. It's a usual cycle. But sometime human being can consume the meat of the sheep. Now this larva egg will enter into human being. Or, or sometime the eggs which are there, eggs which are there in the grass, which is by dog excreta, can be taken by the human being by mistake. And this is how the eggs enter into the human being. Okay. So as I told you, X by the dog and the human being, this can be. So what I was wanted to say, grass which contain egg, this can by accidentally, they can enter the human GIT. Why? By mistake, something falls on the ground, a child take up the, that eaten, which is mixed with the dog feces. Having X. Cyst may be asymptomatic but may present with painful abdominal mass. Definitely it is in the liver. It's going to cause pain in the abdomen, especially right upper quadrant. It may be single or multiple. Rupture of cyst can, this is one of the most important line in surgery. Because if it ruptures, it can cause anaphylaxis. It is such an important line written in red letter. So when surgeon is going to operate, surgeon is going to operate, this is the cyst. They make sure that they remove and block. They remove and block. As it is, they don't want it to rupture. They don't want it to rupture, it will remove and block. And it is by default. They always carry in black paper. Black paper, it will be like this. Then the surgeon can see very clearly that it is and block, it is not ruptured. It's not ruptured. Okay? It's such an important point. It, uh, rupture can lead to anaphylaxis. Investigation, eosinophilia is there in only less than 15%. Eosinophilia is not a very important finding. And X-ray may show calcification in cyst wall. If it's a chronic, if it's a chronic long-standing case, there may be calcification in the cyst wall also. Return. So the two things, eosinophilia is not an important finding and calcification can be there. Best way to diagnose is serology. Serology. Something very important. 
cyst is there we diagnose by serology and the test is used like elisa test elisa or we can go for echinococcus antibody to so elisa test can be done or we can check for the antibodies the point to be noted that in case of hydratus cyst we tend to diagnose by serology in serology elisa or we can use immunoglobulin can be tested i hope you have written it by now CT scan, water lily sign, such a VVIP topic. Water lily, you can see CT scan, water lily sign. Can this question come in all the exam? Water lily sign in CT scan is seen in high dated cyst. Lovely picture you can see. Okay. complication it can rupture can lead to anaphylaxis second day infection and sometime it can communicate intrahepatic biliary tree can communication but not this is single most important single most important is this treatment we use albendazole or mebendazole every patient should be given albendazole or mebendazole prior to definite therapy this is the first line treatment later on we can use what we call as pair 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 puncture aspiration injection reabsorption just remember pair you don't have to go into technicalities i have shown you picture also but just to inform you what is done the you question is this pair treatment is done for what answer should be hydrate assist this is the only question they ask you it done under ultrasonography okay pair technique is used for treatment of just member pair amoebic liver abscess <laughs> this is called by again माइक्रोबायोलॉजी एंटोमीबा हिस्टोलिटी का दे वेरी लार्ज सिंगल एंड लॉक लोकेटेड इन द राइट साइड इट इज सच ए इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन रिमेम्बर पायोजेनिक वर मल्टी लॉकुलेटेड दे वर स्मॉल बट दिस लार्ज सिंगल राइट साइडेड <coughs> pain swelling fever clinically <coughs> pyogenic and amoebic they have same presentation clinically you cannot differentiate both will have swelling fever tender hepatomegaly okay but once you do ultrasound single and multiple can help you differentiate again serology is the best way to diagnose just like in hydrated cyst we diagnose by serology here also we like to go by serology 
compatibly with invasive amoebiasis like liver abscess. Ultrasonography, look into this, you are getting single. And like I told you, if you see the chest x-ray, look into this diaphragm and this diaphragm. This happened, raised diaphragm is there on the right side. This we saw in pyogenic liver abscess also. Okay. And when we aspirate, you get ENCOVI sauce. Can't forget this pus, ENCOVI sauce. Now I have a question for you. Many, many of you will be going for MD medicine or MS surgery. Yes, you'll, many of you will be doing MD medicine in Delhi Ames or Maulana Azhar or PGI Chandigarh. And this, in your MD exam, they'll ask you this question. Question will be, what the color of amoebic liver abscess? Everybody knows the answer is ENCOVI sauce. Everybody, examiner knows, you know the answer, ENCOVI sauce. Now, examiner will look at me. Examiner will sit like this. He will sit, he'll go to back of his chair and he will shake his chair like this. If you can appreciate, okay, what he will say. Okay, and Kobe sauce. Tell me any Indian food item about and Kobe sauce. Once this question comes, 99% people are not able to answer. What he wants, oh, and Kobe sauce is a British English dish. I don't know what is that. Tell me any other Indian dish, the question is here, student gets stuck up. The answer is, those of you who understand, Imli ki chutney. Imli ki chutney. I think tamarind. If I'm not wrong, tamarind, imli ki chutney. So the moment you say imli ki chutney, he will just get up from his seat and oh, you get gold medal in MD medicine. Okay, so this say imli ki chutney is a viva question. Even he says, you know the answer. Never say, now learn the technique of answering. You say enkovi sauce. Don't say imli ki chutney. Let him ask one more question. And that will be your trump card to get gold medal in MD medicine. So friends, I have got long term planning for you, not only to clear your FMG exam, but to get admission in MD medicine in Delhi, Ames or Morana Zad or PGI Chandigarh. Also to get gold medal in MD medicine, long term planning. Lovely question. Treatment, metronidazole, tinazole, everybody knows. This is the rank number one question. We always use any agent which is going to kill luminal in the GIT, the lanoxanide furate. This is the anti-cystic disease. It takes care of cyst in the GIT, cyst. Hydroxychloroquine we use in liver abscess. This is the rank number one question. This is the rank number one question. Okay. So golden line to remember, make a box, fever with right up of down pain, single abscess on ultrasound, and Kobe sauce color. This is amoebic liver abscess. The whole amoebic liver abscess is squeezed in just one line. Just one line. Fever, right of upper pain, single abscess, anchovy sauce, amoebic liver abscess. I hope you have written it by now. 
नॉन एल्कोहलिक फैटी लिवर डिजीज वी ऑल नो दैट एल्कोहल लीड टू फैटी लिवर बट फैटी लिवर कैन बी ड्यू टू नॉन एल्कोहलिक वी कॉल एज एन एफ एल डी वेल ओ दिस वेरी ओबीस मैन डेफिनेटली इस लिवर विल ऑल्सो बी हैविंग लॉट ऑफ फैट बट ही टेक नो एल्कोहल तो दिस वॉट वी कॉल एज एन ई एफ एल डी his liver will be calling as any fld what is this so when we talk about non alcoholic fatty liver disease is a metabolic syndrome that is insulin resistance obesity picture i showed to you that will lead to fatty infiltration of hepatocyte cellular ballooning and ultimately necrosis let us say this is the liver cell lot of fat enter into it it become like a balloon fat and ultimately this will rupture and that will lead to liver necrosis fat is causing so this may cause cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma point to be noted cirrhosis hepatocellular carcinoma this independent of alcohol use patient is not using alcohol that's why we call it as non alcoholic fatty liver disease one more thing fatty liver can be due to alcohol it could be due to fat if it is due to lipid alt will be more than ast sg pt will be more than sgot but if it is due to s alcohol s g o t will be more than s g p t this is a rank number one question simple lft will tell you whether it is a fatty liver is due to alcohol or due to lipid rank one question okay can afford to forget this line rank one question make a box of this also okay now one more thing you talk about simple fatty liver disease nafld is a benign process but later on non alcoholic hepatosteato hepatitis nash this is with fibrosis and lead to cirrhosis so nafld is the initial stage up to this it is a reversible but later on it may become fibrosis we call as nash so nash and nafld are that of the two part of same disease this is initial stage this is late stage or in a lighter way i say you go to see any movie in between the movie is a interval so first half second half so you can say this is the first half of the movie and this is the second half of the movie the criteria is fibrosis that means the liver is damaged usually due to intestinal resistance is there and insulin resistance leptin resistance may lead to hepatic fibrosis they also have a leptin resistance okay and that lead to hepatic fibrosis and nowadays they say is one of the most important cause cryptogenic cirrhosis what we have been previously taught that idiopathic idio there are many cases of which are idiopathic many cases of cirrhosis which are idiopathic we don't know the reason they say it is all due to nash so it's not idiopathic it is all due to obesity induced so now obesity is also a cause of cirrhosis of liver nash ultrasonography you get hyper echoic shadow normal shadow and hyper echoic shadow just remember hyper echoic shadow you don't need to remember other thing hyper echoic shadow you get is in nash nash and if you go for again pathology what i 
ऑलरेडी टोल्ड टू यू दे हैव ए मैक्रो वेजिकुलर फैट विद एन एक्यूट फैटी दे मे हैव मेलोरी बॉडी न्यूट्रोफिल इन्फिल्ट्रेशन एंड पेरी सेलर फाइब्रोसिस सो वेन यू आर टेकिंग ए बायोप्सी आउट ऑफ दिस दिस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट and melory body can be there rest rest you can forget so macro vesicular fat i told you liver cell will be having lot of fat and melory body may be there what is this look into oh lovely lovely photo cannot a photo for just see big fat all fat 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 just like eggs white eggs all fat globules simple diagnostic the diagnostic treatment weight loss is the main thing rest all are supportive treatment metformin can be given thio that is pioglitazone can be given orally stat art or sodioxycholic vitamin e bariatric surgery in fact that is the mainstay of treatment rest all are supportive so if you were asked what the best treatment the answer is bariatric surgery the best invariably they will talk about bariatric surgery rest all are non specific none of them i show you the photograph a very fatty man very fatty man you can treat only by bariatric surgery rest all are theoretic but the, for exam point of view metformin pioglitazone orally stat acidic of c vitamin e also they all can be given but this is all the the all is our best treatment is bariatric surgery so lmrp last minute vision point nafld is a benign process and nash is with fibrosis that is the process which can go to cirrhosis of liver Okay. Primary biliary cholangitis, so-called primary biliary cirrhosis. This is a VIP topic. Previous name was primary biliary cirrhosis. now it is primary biliary cholangitis rest these are same but change has occurred from cirrhosis to cholangitis now before i talk about primary biliary cirrhosis let me talk to you regarding biliary cirrhosis this is due to biliary so obstruction to bile flow in intrahepatic or extrahepatic point to be noted obstruction in the liver itself is intrahepatic outside liver is extrahepatic let me show you basic concept about anatomy and physiology this is the liver we have a portal tract central vein bile this is the liver cells they are liver cell bile flow from center to periphery bile flow from center to periphery come to bile ductule finally bile duct this bile ductule ultimately all bile ductule will combine to make common bile duct and this common bile duct will go to second part of duodenum and it will enter into second part of duodenum now i have a question what the name of this opening write down the answer in chat box what is the name of this simple question from anatomy
okay answer is yes you are right ampulla of waiter so now this is simple problem may occur here 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 extra hepatic if this is occur extra hepatic and and this is so called and if the problem blockage occurs inside inside the liver this is intra hepatic intra hepatic or extra hepatic extra hepatic gallstones carcinoma head of pancreas carcinoma head of pancreas with this background of normal anatomy let's go back to the basics so it can be primary or primary biliary cirrhosis when the problem is mainly in the liver itself intrahepatic and if it is outside liver is secondary liver cirrhosis this one is usually autoimmune and anti mitochondrial antibody are positive this is the most important line in primary biliary cirrhosis anti mitochondrial antibody are positive secondary anti mitochondrial antibody are negative this is one of the important criteria to differentiate between primary and secondary biliary cirrhosis with this background now we talk about primary biliary cirrhosis or primary biliary cholangitis as we read it the problem lies obliteration of intrahepatic bile duct is a chronic inflammatory granulomatous destruction of obliteration of intrahepatic so there are keywords are chronic inflammatory granulomatous autoimmune mediated cholestatic there will be stoppage of flow of of bile write down so i want you to repeat where my pen goes what is this everybody should speak primary biliary cirrhosis what is this chronic what is this inflammation granulomatous obliteration of intrahepatic bile duct obliteration of intrahepatic autoimmune mediated cholestasis there is obstruction to bile flow it is associated with crest syndrome crest syndrome is scleroderma sicka syndrome jogren syndrome autoimmune thyroiditis hashimoto and type 1 diabetes to so primary biliary cirrhosis can be there may be having associated scleroderma jogren syndrome hashimoto or type 1 diabetes okay the clinical feature female 30 to 60 year female male ratio is 9 is to 1 usually because it is a autoimmune disease is a autoimmune disease and autoimmune disease are usually more common in females pruritus itching is the first 
presentation initial presentation itching 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 for years together this lady will go to 10 skin doctors skin specialist itching 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 but not getting treatment insidious proteitis is insidious first symptom and may be very severe fatigue at night fatigue so lady itching and fatigue whole day she is doing itching itching and itching not getting control look she has the liver disease but she is presenting with itching skin problem the physical finding jaundice may be there but it's a late finding there may be steatorrhea with malabsorption painful hepatosplenomegaly cholestasis xanthelisma pale stool portal hypertension right down jaundice steatorrhea malabsorption painful hepatosplenomegaly evidence of cholestasis means reduced bile flow portal hypertension i want you to repeat wherever my pen goes number 1 jaundice is a late finding steatorrhea with malabsorption painful hepatosplenomegaly evidence of cholestasis xanthelisma pale stool portal hypertension inflammatory arthropathy joint pains write down inflammatory arthropathy severe hyperlipidemia can be there and hyperlipidemia will lead to xanthelisma okay xanthelisma write down so speak out inflammatory arthropathy severe hyperlipidemia xanthelisma this you can skip this you can skip no need to write so they have xanthelisma and arthropathy look into this 10% patient may have autoimmune hepatitis a 10% patient may have autoimmune hepatitis so called overlap syndrome write down lab alkaline phosphatase is increased alp alkaline phosphatase why because of cholestasis increase serum 5 nucleotidase rank 1 question increase gamma gt alt str minimally increase rank 1 question so in this primarily alp is increase sgot sgpt are normal gamma gt increase and five nucleotide is not known to three lakh people rank 1 question but the most important is even bilirubin are normal may be slightly increased but anti mitochondrial antibody this is the one the most important 
इसको भूलना दंडनीय अपराध है एंटी माइटोकोन एंटीबॉडी ए एन ए और एंटी स्मूथ एंटीबॉडी मे बी दे आर नॉट नेसेसरी हाइपरलिपिडीमिया इंक्रीज आई जी एम दिस सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग तो इन दिस स्लाइड डोंट फॉर गेट दिस लाइन एंड डोंट फॉर गेट दिस लाइन Point to be noted: jaundice is minimal, bilirubin is raised minimal, SGOT, SGPT are raised minimal, ALP is raised too much, lipid are raised, but the most important and which will be always there. Without this, the question on primary biliary cirrhosis is incomplete. Two things: don't forget pruritus and anti-mitochondrial antibody. तो डायग्नोस्टिक क्राइटेरिया एंटी माइटोकोन एंटीबॉडी ए एम ए इंक्रीज ए एल पी एंड बायोप्सी एविडेंस एनी टू आउट ऑफ थ्री शुड बी देयर एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ रेज ए एल पी एंड एंटी माइटोकोडल एंटीबॉडी बायोप्सी यूज इन नॉट नीडिड बट इन सम केसेज इट मे बी नीडिड बट इफ दीज टू आर देयर then diagnosis is almost confirmed ultrasound bile duct is normal why the problem is intrahepatic hepatosplenomegaly will be there bile duct is normal Complication malabsorption, metabolic bone disease like osteomalacia, hepatocellular carcinoma, Sika syndrome, hypothyroid and portal hypertension can be there. so i want everybody should repeat wherever my pen goes speak out mild option metabolic bone disease hepatocellular carcinoma sicka syndrome hypothyroid portal hypertension out of this this is a very very important metabolic bone disease treatment just remember also deol or cdeoxycholic acid or cdeoxycholic acid you just have to remember this only rest all is not needed they are not going to ask you question also deoxycholic acid this decreases the progression of disease write down and make a box only this much this you don't need it also deoxycholic acid Pruritus is the main problem. We you can use by rifampicin, cholestyramine, and plasma phrases. Point to be noted: rifampicin, which is an anti-tubercular drug, is also used in is also used in the treatment of itching. In the treatment of itching in case of primary biliary cirrhosis. Rest supplement. hepatic transplantation nobody going to ask you but you should write down vitamin a k d supplement and hepatic transplantation
golden line to remember a middle aged lady presenting with priorities for a long period with anti mitochondrial antibody is primary biliary cirrhosis Speak out. जहां मेरा पेन जाए वट इज दिस मिडल एज लेडी विद प्रोवाइटिस एंटी माइट्रोकोन एंटीबॉडी इज प्राइमरी बिलेरी सिरोसिस नाउ द लास्ट टॉपिक प्राइमरी स्क्लेरोजिंग कोलेंजाइटिस प्राइमरी स्क्लेरोजिंग कोलेंजाइटिस Previous one was primary biliary cholangitis, sclerosing cholangitis. Is a idiopathic, autoimmune, chronic cholestatic disorder, just like primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune, chronic. There is a fibrosing cholangitis, leading to inflammatory strictures. So now here we have strictures are there. sclerosing means stiff and hard obstruction is sclerosing so primary problem here is strictures this is the only keyword autoimmune in this slide there are only two keyword to be remember autoimmune strictures rest all i'll be discussing in the next slide write it down look into this what we are finding this is a gallbladder cystic duct hepatic duct common bile normal but here what we are getting is like this look into bd appearance bd appearance alternating structure and dilatation structure and structure dilatation stick dilatation structure dilatation structure dilatation structure so we are getting structure dilatation is beaded appearance both intra and extra hepatic bile duct point to be noted very carefully of course normally talk about extra hepatic but is intra hepatic also make a box of this so there ultimate it lead to secondary biliary cirrhosis because of blockage blockage is going to cause biliary cirrhosis secondary biliary cirrhosis hla dr3 dq2 dw this you should remember dr3 dq2 and drw52a and structure will lead to back pressure which lead to cirrhosis positive family history will be there okay so key word are secondary biliary cirrhosis hla and back pressure lead to cirrhosis they are the three key words in this particular slide most important line and this line it will it is often associated with inflammatory bubble disease like ulcerative colitis this the most important line in this this line will always be there in the exam so question is even you are getting one case of ulcerative colitis it is mandatory to investigate for primary sclerosing cholangitis or you are getting a case of primary sclerosing cholangitis you should always investigate for ulcerative colitis so point 10 and 11 both are these are same that means if you are getting any one of the two 
either primary sclerosing cholangitis or ulcerative colitis, you have to investigate for other one. It is mandatory. It's such an important line. So you can say ulcerative colitis and uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, they are the two close friends. There are two close friends. If one friend is there, other friend you have to be there. Now, age 30 to 45 years, men more than females. Something unique. It is an autoimmune disease more common in males. Normally, autoimmune diseases are more common in females, but this is one exception where autoimmune disease is more in males. Don't forget this line. Make a box of these two lines. Patient, so write down, make a box of this line. Mean age is 30 to 45. Male, female, more autoimmune disease. Maybe no symptom, or maybe having intermittent jaundice, fatigue, weight loss, pruritus. Point to be noted, you are getting same finding what we got is what we got in primary biliary cirrhosis. Cirrhosis can occur. And they also have a fat soluble vitamin deficiency, the way we got in. Primary biliary cirrhosis, write down, write down, or take a click. Remember, in both the cases, maybe primary biliary cirrhosis or here also, we are getting fat soluble vitamin are deficient. We are getting itching. We are getting pain abdomen. But remember, the primary is more in female and this is more in males. I hope you have written it by now. Some people may have autoimmune hepatitis. This we got in primary biliary cirrhosis also. There also some patient may have autoimmune hepatitis. We call it overlap syndrome. But remember, in primary sclerosing cholangitis, anti-mitochondrial antibody are negative. Anti-mitochondrial antibody are absent is one of the most important point by which you can differentiate from primary biliary cirrhosis. AMA is negative. In primary AMA is positive. So in this UK, forget all these, I don't mind. But don't forget this line. Out of whole, you, you can cut it. Not very important. But this is the most important. How will you differentiate from primary biliary cholangitis? Answer is AMA positive. It will be negative. Complication almost same as what we discussed. There can be cholangitis infection. Secondary biliary cirrhosis we discuss. Portal hypertension we discuss. Now this is something unique. Increased gallbladder cancer, colorectal cons. These are the two most important VIP question. Gallbladder cancer and colorectal cancer. And of course, no need to say that should investigate for ulcerative colitis. Bacterial cholangitis, secondary bilirubin cirrhosis, portal hypertension, gall ca gallbladder cancer, colorectal cancer. Bolenge mere piche, ha. Everybody should speak. Yes. Yes. Increased risk of cholangiocarcinoma, cancer of the bile duct. So, increased risk of gallbladder cancer. Increased risk of Colorectal part, cholangiocarcinoma, 
where one of the most important line gallbladder cancer bile duct cancer and colorectal cancer investigation first thing is raise gamma gt first thing to raise is gamma gt rank 1 question this is a rank 1 question this is a rank 1 question this is a rank 1 question so three rank 1 question you are getting gamma gt rank 1 question bilirubin alp and bile acid are in keys cholestasis prolonged pt because because of liver dysfunction p nk is positive in 96% cases igm increase ana is positive but anti mitochondrial antibody anti mitochondrial antibody is negative so every line is a this other rank one question nobody knows the answer people don't read this topic and i'm quite sure many of you are also listening for the first time and that will make you the rank one so repeat behind me gamma gt is increase gamma gt is increase bilirubin alp bile acid are increase cholestasis prolong pnk increase ana positive and what is negative anti mitochondrial antibody are negative if we diagnose by an ercp ercp you can see beaded appearance investigation of choice is erp ercp you get beaded appearance you can also go for magnetic resonance cleidocranography mrcp is a gold standard test this is a rank 1 question question from radiology we can nicely integrate with radiology also you may be finding little difficult why because maybe you are listening for the first time but don't worry once you go home and you read you find very easy and of course when you get rank 1 in your exam you will be very happy you will feel all the you will forget all the tiredness liver biopsy very very important question from pathology onion skin look into this this is a liver biopsy everyone must have seen this onion cut this typically onion scales are there onion skin make a box very very rank one question from pathology histopathology okay done this line make a box every body should be investigated for colonoscopy to rule out ulcerative colitis the line i told you every patient diagnosed with primary sclerosing cholangitis should be investigated for colonoscopy should be done to rule out ulcerative colitis differential diagnosis is primary biliary cirrhosis but i i told you in this anti mitochondrial antibody will be negative and this antibody will be positive in primary sclerosing cholangitis treatment again ursodeoxycholic acid we use in primary cholestyramine an antibiotic for cholangitis 
same treatment what we did it in primary biliary cirrhosis also deoxycholic acid cholesteramine and antibiotic then supplementation non specific you can go for dilatation and stenting of stricture this is the main thing you just or liver transplantation is one of the most common indication of liver transplant so you have to remember these two either you dilate the stricture or you can go for liver transplantation golden line to remember male pruritus with cholestasis lft with ulcerative colitis is primary sclerosing cholangitis so all this this all about hepatology this is all about hepatology i hope you learned now i have a homework for you i gave you so many boxes like this you go you are tired go home have your dinner tomorrow morning or tonight if possible but definitely tomorrow morning you two people will sit together you just read out the boxes in front of your friend and you will find all the boxes you will be able to revise in just 15 minutes i have not taught you one subject of medicine i taught you topic of liver i included everything everything they are not going to ask anything beyond what i taught you so first do not do questions first you rule of seven seven time you have to speak or listen by the time and this every time first time you speak for 15 minute or next time you'll be able to speak in 12 minute third time in 10 minutes and that means that means in 2 hours you shall be able to revise you shall be able to revise entire liver 15 minute mein revise kar lenge and 2 ghante mein aapko liver rat jayega you will be deep into your brain after that you start doing question from anatomy from histology the physiology biochemistry micro medicine pediatric whatever it is and you find your entire topic topic is covered up and they are not going to ask a single question beyond what i taught you you still have any problem you can very well contact me i am too happy to solve your problem okay you can ask rather you can mail to uh, mail to dr ashish mail okay or you can talk to me i'll be too happy me and our my team will be very happy to answer your solve your questions i hope you like the class do give me feedback i'll be too happy to receive your uh, feedback and if you like it do talk, talk to your friends do talk to social media do talk about this institute where you are studying nlc next do talk that they teach well do mention about dr ashish name that he is done a good job okay and wish you all the best thank you very much any problem be in touch with me right o if you have uh, this my mail
dr. Bhatia at dbmi.edu.in. Then, if you like, do send the feedback by mail. I'll save your feedback as a souvenir forever. Thank you very much. And do not forget to do the homework. And once you speak in front of your friend, how much time you took to revise, do send me the time in that WhatsApp number. Send me that I spoke once and I needed this much minute only. And regarding the feedback of the class, do send at this mail. I'll be waiting for your mail. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you very much.